Holy shyster, it worked finally. Well, we'll see what happens now. I'm surprised it actually worked. Yay. Okay. Now we'll see if anything happens. Shit, I forgot my cup downstairs. Otherwise. Oh, well. I'll drink out of my cane. What the heck? It finally worked, y'all. Okay. Where are we going to go first? Okay. Sorry, give me a second. I had to reset this up. Move that over here. Okay. Holy crap, it's about time. StreamYard is back in business. Okay, I'm going to play the intro and then we're going to get into it. It's actually working. Thank you all for rejoining me. Hey, everybody coming in. Thank you for being here. Sorry about earlier. It was just a streamer glitch. No clue what was going on, but we're going to get into it and try to get through all of this stuff. So I'm not going to go up in the comments because a lot of you were here earlier. So this is, um, Shorty, is there another one showing that I'm live? Is there another one? <laughs> Kenzie just got home. <laughs> Kenzie just got in the door and whoo, the other one. Let me look right quick to make sure. Oh, the one I did earlier, the one I did before. Crap. Okay. Well, I don't know what's going on with this thing. It is a glitch central today, so we'll see. Okay, we're going to get into it. A um, couple quick notes. <laughs> Crazy how things happen in such a short time. Uh, whoever's in my comments under an alt talking about Katie Joy for the second time this week, you're wasting your time and mine by reading your comments. First and foremost, there's a whole community to call Katie Joy up. Expecting me to call Katie Joy out on stuff that I don't even know, obviously, what's going on or wasting my time by tattling on her. Go call her out yourself. You obviously have a channel. Go do it. There's a whole fucking community. Go find them, which you're already there. I'm not that girl. And don't expect me now or ever to call out people like Katie Joy because you demand me to. Get that straight. I didn't like her from jump. I've never had a relationship with her. Y'all are fucking weird. Stay out of my comments with the bullshit or you're just going to get blocked because I have nothing to do with that group. Want nothing to do with that group. And expecting me to like involve myself in shit that I don't even know. Y'all are so fucking weird. Anyways, just a quick note before we get into this because this is problematic in itself enough. And y'all have a channel to the troll in my comments who created that alt in January to comment on shit. You have multiple channels, obviously. Go do it yourself. Stop expecting me to take my time to go insert myself or research stuff to find out what I would even be calling her out on when I don't watch her. Seriously. Y'all are fucking weird with your Katie Joy obsession and wanting everybody to call her out. You have a whole fucking community. A whole community. Just because they're all 
just like her and ridiculous and embarrassing. That's your fault, not mine. Okay, anyways, on to what's important. People exploiting children. That's what we're going to talk about today. So today we are going to go over to Sweetie Pilo is where we're starting. We've got three live streams that we're going to try to get crammed in as much as possible. Um, three live streams to talk about in this one. And then I intend on coming back as long as I have enough time before kids get home to talk about Pascal. Pascal is on. I've already got my thumbnails, everything ready, and my timestamps, everything's good to go there. So as long as I have enough time, I will be doing Pascal content today too. So let's get through as much as this as possible. This is all under fair use. This is based on my opinion, my opinion only of the stuff that they're putting out here publicly. Please understand that this comes with a heavy, heavy, heavy trigger warning. This is salacious speculation that there is no proof behind. Please understand that when I put this out here, if I see a single one of you that's in this live stream running in comment sections and stating that this is fact or that there is anything with behind this, I'm going to put you on blast. Trust and believe. I will put all of you subs on blast for running with this because this is absolutely character assassination to the most degree and could ruin somebody's life. When, especially when we don't have a clue who the sources are behind this, where this information is coming from, if it's factual or not. These are incredibly massive allegations to be putting out here. And Sweetie Pilo seems to have a tendency of not really being factual or truthful. So I tend to believe that there's quite a bit of bullshit with it. And we've seen subs, a lot of subs run with misinformation. This is how far they're going with this. The reason I'm starting here is because this is the new rumor on the entire streets that has been picked up in the last 24 hours and people are running with it. We talked about it at the end of my T-Rev stream last night or yesterday and I showed you guys what they were going with. This is bad and it's very bad. It's very damaging. And again, please understand we have no credible information that points the fingers to any of the parents in the Sebastian Rogers case. As of right now, the factual information from law enforcement states that the parents have been cooperating and that right now nobody's in cuffs not a single person so take this with a grain of salt please and please do not repeat this as fact i am i swear i will put people on blast for this because this is salacious ridiculous speculation again heavy trigger warning Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Today is the 44th day since Sebastian vanished. And yesterday I had some information come across uh, my awareness, I'll say. And this information is very big. Turning closed captioning on for anybody that's hearing impaired or anything like that. If that bothers you, please let me know. I'm also speeding it up to 1.25. No matter who you are, like this is a big deal. So I'm going to make my way to that point by first showing some documents. Now, you may or may not have seen these. More than likely, you haven't seen them, but it's possible that you have. So we're going to go through just a, a few lines of this this is part of the divorce, okay? The divorce between Seth and Katie. And this was Seth's reaction or Seth's, uh, what would we call it? Um, reply, sort of, I guess, to Katie's. So I'm going to share this with you right now. Okay. In the matter of Rogers, attachment to DV, reasons I do not agree. I So what she is reading from is Seth's statement to the court during their divorce. We've heard him talk about, those of us that have been following this, have heard Seth talk about their divorce and some of the allegations that went. So you'll see where she is pushing this. I, Seth Rogers, declare that I am respondent in the above captioned matter and have personal knowledge of each fact set forth in this declaration. Oh. If called as a witness, I could and would complete. Queen Bee, I just saw what you wrote. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. It is so hard to put an animal to sleep. I am so fucking sorry. My heart goes out to all of you. Ugh. testify within the bounds here too. Petitioner oh, Katie L. Rogers, here and after referred to as Katie, and I were married on June 21st, 2008, and still reside, reside together. We've been married for eight years and three months. 
We have one child together, Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, here and after referred to as Sebastian, born December 7th, 2008. On or about August 29, 2016, Katie obtained a temporary, temporary restraining order against me and had me removed from our marital residence. She listed Sebastian as a protected party and obtained a child custody order through the TRO, forbidding me to see him. There is a permanent domestic violence restraining order hearing set for September 16, 2016 before this court. Since being served with the DVTRO, I have not violated the DVTRO and have had no impermissible contact with either petitioner or our son. On August 29, 2016 and September 8, 2016, I turned in the firearms I was in legal possession of to the San Diego County Sheriff's Office, attached her to as Exhibit A, are true and correct copies of the receipts and notices of confiscation. I've abided by the terms of the DR DV TRO, even though Katie's actions rendered me homeless. And that is one thing. He was, uh, Seth was actually homeless, I think for at least six months around this time. Okay, again, this is their divorce stuff. Okay, you, you'll you see where she's, why she opened with this is beyond me, but she's painting a narrative here, of course. But this woman is about to make some major statements after she reads this. So buckle up. That the DVTRO was filed. Katie's request for a restraining order is based upon the following. I was highly aggressive in my mannerisms and I cursed and yelled at her. This is not a basis for a restraining order under the facts. I was very angry yelling at our son and our son added, daddy hit me. Not a basis for a restraining order under the facts as I never hit him. I've yelled at her and our son and slammed a door, breaking it. Not a basis for a restraining order. As a result of these baseless allegations, I respectfully request the court deny Katie's request for permanent domestic violence restraining order in full. There is no basis for her claims and she fails to prove conduct under the Domestic Violence Prevention Act that would justify a restraining order. Incident of August 28, 2016. In her request for DVRO, Katie claims that on August 28, uh, excuse me, 2016, I was being highly aggressive in my mannerisms and verbally, quote, watching it, watching her in her sleep. Okay. And I yelled at her because she's not willing to, she's because she is not willing to beat her son. Not sure what we mean by that. Okay. This is not true. And even if it was, it would not be the basis for a DVRO. What actually happened on this day is that I was having a difficult time with our son. He refused to do. Again, this is unnecessary information. Totally unnecessary is not going to impact Sebastian being found. Do anything I asked him. I asked him to clean his room and he replied no. And that he didn't have to listen to me or anything I asked him to do. And he told me I should apologize for asking him to clean his room. I attempted to appropriately discipline him by sternly telling him that no matter the circumstances, should he ever speak to any adult, let alone his mother or father, the way he spoke to me. After this, Sebastian ran downstairs to Katie, jumped in her lap and started saying he hated me. And that he wished I would leave and never come back. After Sebastian seemed to calm down a bit, Katie got up from the chair she was in and walked outside. This, and Sebastian approached me and told me he loved me and wanted to live with me after all. After this incident, I was very upset, but I was never violent in any way. Our neighbor was in the house and she said something about being uncomfortable. I told our neighbor I was going to just get some coffee and go outside to be alone. When I did, our neighbor followed me outside and asked me what was wrong. I told her how I was feeling and asked her to just let me calm down and compose myself. At no point did I act violently toward her or anyone else in the house. And I never yelled at Katie because he wouldn't, because she, excuse me, because she wouldn't quote be our son. There was never any, let's see. There was never any, hold on a second. Okay, well, here, we'll just go with this. This is not true. Even if it was, it would not be the basis for the DVRL. What actually happened? Okay, just a second guys. Yes. Okay, I think I carry on from here then. Oh, Let me double check. Okay, good. All right. Um, <clears throat> this is not true. And even if it was, it would not be the basis for a DVRO. What actually happened on this day was that Katie and I were arguing about how we were going to proceed with our divorce. Our divorce has been filed and we were still residing in the same house, which created a tense situation. Although we argued. Just a minute. That's her and not mine. Although we argued, I never once violently acted violently and never once did I encourage her to quote beat our son, as she alleges in her pleadings. During our argument, I left the residence and slammed the door, but her claim that I broke the door is false. The door was already broken before I slammed it. Again, there was never any violence, nor was there any threat of violence. 
In a request for DBRO, Katie claims that on August 11, 2016, I was angry at our son and that our son told her that I hit him. The truth is that I never put a hand on our son. Our son suffers from a rare condition. Here we go. And here is where she starts the painting of the narrative. All of this. You notice how she didn't read Katie's statement? You'll see why. Called 6Q27 chromosomal deletion syndrome. Among the symptoms he suffers from are incidents of acting out where he hits and bites himself out of frustration. He has been known to throw himself to the ground during these incidents. This is a very common thing for him and others have witnessed him doing this. I filed here with declarations from some of these witnesses. Okay, everybody still with me? Good. So when I saw this line here about Sebastian, when he gets into a situation where he acts out and that he bites himself out of frustration, and that he would throw himself on the ground. All right. High trigger warning, especially to my special needs mamas or anybody that has a teenager that potentially out of frustration, anger, self-harms, please trigger warning because she's about to paint an entire narrative and involve it with this case. All of a sudden, I was reminded of those bite marks, guys, on... Uh, on Seth's. This is Sweetie Pilo, um, zero. Sweetie Pilo. Forearm. And I'm not Seth. Excuse me. Let me say that over again. I was reminded of those bites on Chris's forearm. Let's look at them again. So this is. All right, so you guys can see these look perfectly spate. I, I don't want to jump to conclusions, but I'm so glad Smiley Stories brought those up during her live stream, her, her interview. So you notice this the scratches on Chris's arms. This is Chris's arms. Chris's arms right here. So you see where she's linking the statements in the divorce decree, the statements in the DV order that attaches to the divorce to scratches on Chris's arms that were visible in an interview eight days after Sebastian went missing. Eight days. Look at those scratches. Now listen to what she's saying. But this isn't this isn't the worst of this yet, you guys. With them, because when I look at these now, all I see is teeth marks. And they look, honest to God, like human teeth marks. They truly do. And so from there, I got to thinking about the kind of potential abuse that I believe poor Sebastian endured in that household. A very reliable source. All right. This, this is where it's going to go. Please remember if you're just coming in, if you repeat this as factual information, you're going to get named and shamed. I don't care who you are because there is no credible evidence to provide any factual basis to this. Again, victims have stories to tell. The timing of this, again, is highly suspect. The allegations that are about to be made by an anonymous, unvetted anything source are huge. This is being ran with massively right now. And this is a complete character assassination without proof. Now, I need to remind you, and I will continually, that there is no nobody in custody right now. Zero. The parents have been cooperating. According to law enforcement, Chris was not, according to the data, was not even in the vicinity when Sebastian went missing. Shared some information with me. I'm going to play you a clip real quick. Trigger and then we'll get into that. Society and not be part of the problem. Can, Can we talk about that? Can we talk about the diapers? Real quick, I'm glad you mentioned that. What's up with the diapers? Could you break that down for me? Because I've heard that many different times in many different uh, comments and, and, and chat forms and all that. Could you just explain a little bit about this diaper situation? So she's building it up to drop this breaking news, this bombshell news. She's building it up to really push this narrative. She's finding clips. She's finding divorce papers. She's finding scratches. Um, he was having accidents at school. And... Chris got tired of Katie taking clothes to him to change clothes, so he made him wear a bullet. Mm. Which is actually one of those things that happens to children that are abused. He would come to my house. Truthfully, it can happen with abuse, but there are so many other causes 
such as his chromosomal deletion, 6Q27. And this right here infuriates me that these two fucking grown ass men, and I know the one is the biological father, are using this information as content on the internet. This is a 15 year old missing child. His life is not fodder for the internet. His struggles are not fodder for the internet. There are so many things that could lead to incontinence issues for kids. So many fucking things for adults. First thing he did when he came in, I was like, take those damn things off. Go take a shower. Put on some underwear and some comfy clothes. Because we're men. We wear our boxers. We wear, wear our boxer briefs. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're not That right there really rubbed me the long, wrong way. We're men. You know what? And if your child needed to wear one, so be it. It doesn't make him less manly because he's got bladder issues or incontinence issues. Doesn't doesn't do anything. That statement right there just ooh, rubs me wrong. I'm wearing pull-ups. And no accidents here. But when he would go over there, he would be wearing diapers. When he went over there, it got to the point where... They're called incontinence briefs. He was forced to bring a diaper over here. For when he left, he couldn't have underwear at their house. Really? Chris didn't want to wear an underwear. Chris wanted to wear a pull-up. Chris got upset that I wouldn't enforce that at my house. What? My son doesn't need to be in a pull-up. My son needs to be treated better. If there was all these things going on... <sighs> Oh. Again, there's no evidence to prove that any of the parents did anything to Sebastian at this point in time, but this is so unnecessary and it's going to get so much worse. Accidents happen. No doubt. All right. But maybe a month without an accident in my house. Real quick before we continue, I do want to give everybody a, a quick heads up. Please, guys, I have pinned it to the top. The fact before she gets started on her bombshell information that she's going to drop, that's not factually sourced. Um, the one thing I have to say is, oh, say it nice, say it nice. The fact is not going over my head, or I'm sure a lot of yours, that he just released completely private personal information about a 15 year old child that the internet doesn't need to know. It's not going to help law enforcement find him. Law, that should have been to law enforcement and that's all the further it needed to go. It didn't need to come to the internet. But it doesn't go over my head that they say all this information and then his cash app is pinned above. You're making money off of releasing private, personal information of a teenager that is missing. Let that sit for a minute. They roll from talking about that information to don't forget his cash apps pinned. So what we have here is a situation where Chris Proudfoot more than likely was abusing him far more than he cares to admit. I mean, we know of the we know of at least one one incident, but honestly, I think there was so many more incidents than that one or two that he's actually admitted to. Because remember, on Nancy Grace, he definitely tried to minimize it quite a bit. Again, we don't have any information to know what was actually going on behind closed doors. We really don't. So I got into a conversation yesterday with a very reliable source. Guys, I wish I could tell you who it was. Very reliable source. I wish, guys, I wish I could tell you who it was. Heavy trigger warning right here. Sweetie Pilo, your little fucking sweet, innocent Christian bullshit act is disgusting and i hope to god you get sued from one end to the other after um, this but the, they want to remain nameless so just take this as you know allegedly or speculation whatever you want to file it they want to remain nameless again huge allegations when you're making huge allegations like this in a situation like this mm. yes. but they're very reliable what they shared with me was information about Chris Proudfoot and the great lengths that his family would go to to cover up for him. So the pretty much the conversation we were having, I was like, do you think, I mean, we, we know what 
so a 15 year old autistic or not wearing diapers who is considered very high functioning they're called incontinence brief you disrespectful uneducated fucking fool are we going to consider that as normal or okay yeah that doesn't seem right. absolutely absolutely if a teenager needs to wear incontinence briefs absolutely and it's none of your fucking business nor the internet there are so many things that can lead to bladder incontinence there are so many things such as his chromosomal deletion the 6q27 can affect organs right this is a kid who in my opinion at the bare minimum he's being physically abused but i even wonder and, and this is what i brought up i said do you think he could be so weird as to like S A type abuse. Okay. I'm going to try to keep my mouth as shut as I possibly can, but this, the audacity of this fucking clown. And then I was told, well, somebody, uh, how do I say this? Okay. In the past, let's say, and this is for sure before Chris was of age. So 18 years old, not only did he S A, his own stepsister. So now she is making a claim about Chris before he was the age of 18. She just said, not only did he essay his stepsister, but he also did this to his cousin. But also to his cousin. Her source, her anonymous source provided her that information. And his mother, Kathy, covered for him, covered it up however she could. And the mom covered for him. Again, this is complete and utter speculation. There is no fact basis behind this. There is nothing provided besides an anonymous source. And suddenly, it all started to make sense. Though these are women, or not women, these are females that in the past were victimized. Is it possible that he didn't have any, I hate to go there, but any preference on this? Is he just an abusive type person? I was deeply troubled fighting this out, guys. Oh yeah, you sound so deeply troubled that you brought it to the fucking internet and used bombshell. How far would Chris's family go to cover secrets? Docs plus Y the diaper, D-O-C-S, meaning the court paperwork, and Y the diapers. You are so deeply disturbed that you decided to use this child as fucking fodder for your sick, salacious speculation of stuff we have no clue about. Again, how would you be privy to that information? A reliable source, right? Very deeply troubled. The thing is, is this family is is truly, in my opinion, a crime family. Like I, Terry, the step. Now, now there might as well just be a mob family. They're just a crime family out here. They're just a crime family out here. Dad of Chris, he has a history of, and not to say that drug users, all drug users, are gonna, you know be shady and, and do unscrupulous things because they won't. But Terry Bowersox does have a history with some methamphetamine. What? What a fucking jump. So because you have a addiction past, that means what? Absolutely nothing in the re real world. <clears throat> but when you're a grimy fucking true crime YouTuber, it means that it just gives them content to put their little grubby mitts on and judge everybody with because they're so perfect while they're grifting off a missing child and releasing personal private information for fodder. Going back to, let's see, what was that? Char charges file, and, and this was a while ago, okay? February 17, 1981, but then you've got, so probation violation in 2006, schedule, what is it, four? So they're pulling backgrounds on his stepdad, Drugs, less than a half ounce. Less than a half ounce. And that was, yeah, 2006. And then in 2011, so March of 2011, obtaining drugs by fraud. And then let's see, 
4, 13, 2011, obtaining drugs by fraud. And then the, what is this? May 23rd of 2006, unlawful drug paraphernalia uses and activity. Again, I don't, I don't want to say that just because somebody did drugs means that they're going to do other shady things. But that takes me to my next point. But I'm going to put it out here and show you his entire background because I'm painting a narrative to spread all over the internet. Check this out. Let me make sure you guys are seeing everything. Okay, good. So this was in one of the groups. So again, we can file this as speculation. But here's what was said. I probably have the missing piece to the puzzle. On the 26th, imagine, look at, it's in the fine Sebastian Rogers case discussion by an anonymous participant, by an anonymous participant. Shocking. Another anon. Around 545 in the morning. So this would have been Monday morning, 545 in the morning. There was an SUV parked on the side of the road, right past the country store on New Hope Road. I cannot 100% swear on the Bible. Roxy, are you asking me why I'm repeating it? Why am I, why am I drawing attention to this? bullshit, complete and utter bullshit that's being used to paint a narrative. Are you asking me why I'm putting it out here and showing it again? Because it's running like wild fire all over the internet as factual information. How the fuck does this help find Sebastian? Anybody? But the SUV looks just like CP, so Chris Proudfoot's mother's SUV. But if it is her vehicle, then the time add, adds up to when Sebastian's mother was about to drive to the school and look for him. I can almost bet my life that she met her up there and gave him to her. I done some asking around and found a landowner. In By the way, if you're new here, because I see there's a lot of you in here, I don't hold back. I'm not going to be the place to pat your ass and give you some comfort feelings because this is some sick, salacious shit that should not be happening to any child or anybody, especially a missing child. This is not fucking fodder for the internet. If you don't like my mouth and my colorful language, this isn't the spot for you. Go sit over there with the speculation that runs rampant across this whole YouTube and running like craziness. I'm not gonna conform to your feelings because this is sick. This is about Sebastian and they are using Sebastian as fodder for sick shit. Information and they just happen to have trail cameras, a few of them right in that area. So in the morning, I'm getting the cards and going to see if I'm right. A few people already know, and Sumner County will know if what is on the camera is what I believe it is. CP's mother and stepfather are some evil people, and I believe with everything I love. It's going to turn out to be what I believe it is. There's six other people seen in that vehicle that morning, park up past that store and school, and I believe we are about to blow it wide open. You know what you're about to blow wide open? What foolish idiots you look like. What foolish idiots you look like. So now they're throwing in speculation that somehow Katie met up with Chris's mom, dropped Sebastian off. There were six six people in the car. They just did a trade off. They're obviously hiding him somewhere. There was property. They're going to go get the trail cams. Do you think law enforcement is just sitting on their ass twiddling their thumbs? Do you really think that law enforcement isn't doing their jobs that they haven't checked the cameras? Do you really think that? Some of you people have lost your goddamn minds. As of recently, I have not seen, <clears throat> just a minute, hold on. I have not seen any follow-up on this, but I found it extremely interesting. When I spoke to somebody in that neighborhood, remember they told me that when she left that, so shortly after she realized he had vanished, she leaves the house and she drives around. They say she came back pretty Pretty quick after that. As a matter of fact, hold on, I might have a video. I think I added the video, uh, some audio in here. Let me see if I can find it. Just a minute. Is it here? Just a minute. Let me see if I've got it on my phone readily, more readily available than this. Because I, well, let's listen to this clip. Hold on. So you guys saw uh, on your camera. I'm right after school on Friday okay. um, on my video about three somewhere around three o'clock this is supposedly a call with a neighbor we don't know who the hell it is we have no clue i could call in say i was their neighbor give them a whole story and they would run with it absolutely that's how dense these people are they don't vet a single fucking thing get the mail on friday okay. then um 
they evidently had been out on Saturday because she comes home, she's pulled up, he jumps out of the car and he um, gets the mail and he, while she's pulling into the garage, he's skipping and he looks happy and he's running up to the front door, but then he doesn't go in the front door and he um, skips. Wait, on Friday when supposed neighbors saw him, he was skipping and looked happy? But he was so fucking miserable. He was so tortured and traumatized in that house. How could he be skipping and look happy on Friday? Get back down the sidewalk and into the garage. But looked really happy. Mm -hmm. I did not. He looked really happy. I did not visually see him on Friday with the camera. But I mean, Sunday with my camera. But that was um, when I asked the Well, my husband asked the police. Yeah. Did you see who took that trash down? Was that Sebastian? Mm -hmm. And they said yes. Because. In this neighborhood, if you went to trash picked up on Monday morning, you got to take it down there Sunday yeah. sometime. Sunday. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's so you guys saw uh, on your camera. And right after school on Friday, okay. um, on my video, about three, somewhere around three o'clock, get the mail on Friday. Okay. Then um, they evidently had been out on Saturday because she comes home, she pulls up, he jumps out of the car and he um, gets the mail and he, while she's pulling into the garage, He's skipping and he looks happy and he's running up to the. He's skipping and he looks happy, but the narrative that they've been painting is that these he's this tortured, traumatized child. Front door, but then he doesn't go in the front door and he um, skips back down the sidewalk and into the garage, but okay. looks really happy. Mm -hmm. I did not, I did not visually see him on Friday with the camera, but I mean Sunday with my camera. But that was um, when I asked the well, my husband asked the police. Yeah. Did you see who took that trash down? Was that Sebastian? Mm -hmm. And they said yes. Because in this neighborhood. Okay, guys, I had you listen to it twice because I'm trying to find this clip, but it's not where I thought it was. She didn't really have much to say about that because that supposed neighbor says that he looked happy on Friday. Imagine that. A teenager <coughs> looking happy one day, but still going through something. Shit. We all do that, right? Uh, we're not done yet. Pretty much this individual told me that she had, that, that Katie immediately drove around the area to look for him. Mods, you know the drill. You get, I trust y'all. You don't have to ask me for anything. If you want me to put it on subs only, let me know. Revival, you can also do that, I think. Um, if you guys need anything, let me know. I will try to keep an eye on anything like that. Uh, you guys, I trust you. If you know that I wouldn't put up with it, kick him. If they're just gonna be over here whining because I'm addressing the sick fetish that these true crime creators seem to have and they get giddy off of releasing minor children's private information, it is what it is. You don't like to be called out what you are? Well, you seem to fetishize missing children, especially ones in Tennessee. Um, and so, you know, speculation, this is thank you guys allegedly, right? And speculation here, but could she have gone over to this area where they're talking about in the in the screenshot I showed you on Hope Road, I think it was. You know, is it possible that maybe there was a quick like a transfer or something? That's my speculations. I know it's a lot, but obviously something happened and somehow they have managed to completely throw off law enforcement and either law enforcement they've They've managed, Katie and Chris have managed to throw off law enforcement. They are so good. They're just that good. Right now is is playing into the lie, like, oh, and, and, and we don't suspect you kind of attitude. Or they really don't suspect them because they've managed to cover their tracks so much. That's the part that's just so confusing. You notice how she didn't include or the fact that they're not guilty of anything? That's just the case. They're not guilty. You notice that she didn't give that option. Anyway, um, I wanted to go back. I want to listen to some of, do you guys remember when Duchess did her, I think this was her second interview. I found some interesting information in that. And what I did is I got a good clip of it. And I just want to go back and listen to that with you guys, because there are so many things that have come out in. By the way, Duchess's interview is the only one that I seem to actually like. It really, honestly, and maybe it's because I like Duchess. Yeah, bias, absolute. We're gonna switch to Smiley now. I've seen enough of that, but now you're gonna see where this is headed. So after she did her rant, this bombshell news that Sweetie Pilo released, of course it got drug all over the internet. The first person that I saw to pick it up and really run with it was Ziggy in Smiley's 
checked. But I decided to listen to Smiley Slimy today. And she had some stuff to say. So I'm going to let you hear what she had to say today. This isn't as troubling. And then we're going to wrap it up with uh, Brittany J and the lovely panel of ignorance once again. But I will be giving Brittany a little credit this time. Shocking, I know. For a whole five seconds, probably. But when people are being factual, I got to give credit. So we're going to do it. Oh, Lord. Good God. This is crazy. Crazy, crazy. And I'm still here this morning and I'm going to continue. What chat was that rapper? And rapper, you know better than this. You know better than this. If you're in here with one of your million alts, you know better than this shit. Rapper, she pins a comment that says someone is saying in another chat, Sebastian was found. Completely irresponsible. No fact basis. Was it just this morning? Yeah, I know. You know, let's see. Hold on a minute, Ricky. The notification came on my phone. Oh, it came on your phone. T or I went there and said, turned into an investigation. He played a new clip. The interview room? Fucking Christmas. Was it the interview Fucking room? Us. On channel, I believe it was channel five. Oh, yeah. That's another thing. Chris and the lab have decided to somehow turn and spin all of this new narrative that there's a criminal investigation here. That was from a month ago that was stated and that was all that was stated. But that's pretty typical when you have no evidence of what's going on. <sighs> Anyways, they're running with anything whatsoever. But those two dumbasses, dumbass and the lab ran and created a whole narrative over that. So people are running wild with that. That's not a good look for you. You know what? I don't know, but I, I feel like, listen, from day one, they have known and they will, they will, I told y'all, this is not, I, I, you know, I know. Yes, I will be doing Pascal also. That I will be honest that... I'm so disappointed in Pascal. I can't even like these people. I don't expect anything out of Pascal. I am very disappointed in. Oh, a lot of people don't have confidence in this stuff. Um, oh, that that was Ricky. They said that was from early in March. Oh, T T Rev T Rev. Okay. I, I you know I don't know I don't I don't know what's going on, but look. I ain't had a chance to vet all this. But anyway, we'll find out. We'll find out today. Look, we know when we know when we know. I'm just telling you. Yeah, when we when the truth comes out, we'll know it. We, we will know it. You're not going to get in trouble, rapper. Um, you're not going to get in trouble at all. Um, it's okay. You just got to um, know, listen, that... Um, you know, I haven't had a chance to vet all this. And I, when I get off, I'll go researching around the the internet and I'll, and the news and I'll see what I can find. My other phone in there is going off. I'm just using my notes on here. My, my phone is blowing up. She never vets anything, truthfully. I don't know if you can hear it, my new phone. Do -do -do, do -do -do -do. I don't even know how to put my ringtone on my new phone. Sounds like T-Mobile. Do -do -do, do -do -do. That stupid sound, I can't stand it. But there, yeah, there's all kinds of rumors going around. So we don't know. We don't know. Oh, wait, wait. You've been a huge push of the rumor mill. You've pushed off so many rumors. You pushed off those comments in your chat. You pinned Ziggy's comments about what Sweetie released. And then Ziggy ran over there and was so excited to drop it in. What a fucking ridiculous mess this is becoming. Um, But when you lie and you try to worm your way around several times, um a polygraph to me and to tbi and fbi and all them it just looks bad it really does nancy grace um she's you chris told her to name a time and place and 
she did. And she tried to make it convenient, jumping through hoops and free of charge. And he made an excuse. And then he he named it. Uh, he said TBI. He named them. He said TBI um, told him not to. So it's just a blame game. That's like a little kid. Something's a By the way, for those in the back, the title says, why would anyone not take a polygraph if innocent? Hashtag Sebastian Rogers. First and foremost, why would you? Why would you take one? Polygraphs are not always factual. I've said it many times. I don't care if I'm innocent, guilty, or anything. Unless I'm forced to take one, uh-uh. And I sure as fuck am not taking one for social media. For people on social media, the only person I would even take one for is the law enforcement officers. That's it. You ain't getting me to take shit for social media or Nancy Grace. Miss me with the bullshit. But the accuracy on those, and if he was to pass it, y'all know what it's going to be. Well, he's a Navy. He's from the, he was in the Navy. He was taught, he was trained to beat the box. That would be the next rumor. Uh-uh. Yes. In my opinion, something's amiss. Why would TBI mm -hmm. tell you not to take that? That would be a dream come true for TBI or any law enforcement. First of all, that takes pressure off of them. And, you know, and that helps them out, literally. And then he goes as far as to call her a liar. That's huge. That's a huge mistake. Plus, it's bad manners. You know what's a huge mistake? People like you running with SA allegations against somebody that law enforcement hasn't deemed guilty of anything. What happened till to the whole innocent until proven guilty in a court of law? Do you understand what they are doing to the whole process of justice here? Do you guys get that? We're going to get into that in Brittany Jays. And we're going to talk about how this impacts the actual court proceedings. And we're going to talk about the difference between streaming court processes for transparency, which we need, versus inserting yourself into an active investigation and running with salacious rumors. You want to sit up there and go, yes, ma'am, and look like a whipped little boy. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Knowing you cowered down to Nancy Grace, and then you're all about trying to control and control him, Sebastian. You're even uh, blackmailing Seth. Blackmailing Seth. She claims that they're blackmailing Seth. These are some hefty allegations. And trying to control others. You thought you were going to come on here and control mine and start out with others that get paid and the money and this and that. I told you real quick. You tell me to do with my money, honey. Because I've been doing this shit for free for two and a half years. This shit. She's been doing this shit for free. As she flashes the child's missing. I could print a bunch off right here. I've, I've got paper right here. It wouldn't cost me a dime. Not a single dime. Ink, so what? It's just ink. What? For those in the back of the room, and for me that don't know how to do this stuff, is a 24 7 job. Maybe Annabelle, thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. Maybe might get a nap here and there. I ain't slept well in three years. I just now got monetized. Said, well, hell, if you can't beat them, join them. I'll never. Okay. This type of shit right here. Time out. Time out. Perfect name. Time out. You heard him. You heard him blackmail Seth. Do you realize what the word blackmail means? Telling somebody that you're going to sue them because of XYZ isn't blackmail. Like, you guys, you guys are just losing the point of so much of this shit. You're so caught up in the parents versus each other. You forgot about Sebastian completely. Or catch up with anything ever.
money wise. And then I take mine and still do and still give, 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 give others. So the she needs a pat on the back today. She's feeling down. The ones with the hate out there, you can fuck the fuck off. Because I'm tired and don't care anymore. Oh. I'm number one for these victims. And that is the end of the story. Oh, really? End of it. She's so stressed out. She lost a goddamn eyebrow. The most important thing is, according to Ellie, there's no evidence. Mm. They say. Look at the disdain that she has when she has to say there's no evidence. You can read between whatever lines you want to. Mm. There's no evidence of um, foul play. Mm. You can read between their words and their lines if you're smart enough and you can. And if you choose to remain on the side of the victim and understand that all the bickering between the parents and releasing all the details that the internet doesn't need to know, and you're waiting for law enforcement to direct the next step of what actually happened to Sebastian instead of making complete wild accusations at the parents, then you obviously aren't smart enough to read between the lines or the narrative that they've all decided to tell you that's what's actually going on. We have nothing to prove anybody is guilty of anything at this point. There's no evidence, though, of Sebastian leaving. It's wild. It's a wild case. And the most important thing is Sebastian is gone. He's just gone. And he needs to be found. He's without any medication. He supposedly, according to his mom, left since she was the last one with him, put herself as the last one with him. Although I've heard different. She, she can't even state the actual facts. She's got to throw in all this other BS. Like there's all these hidden secrets that she knows, but she just can't tell anybody. If you know, then go tell somebody. Obviously you probably have. I'm sure there's probably 600 tips from the internet now. But she's acting like they know. Where's Sebastian then? He said he did not have shoes on. He was barefoot. He had no coat or jacket. And it was cold there. It's still cold sometimes there. And the wind is blowing. Where is he getting money? Where is he getting something to eat? How is he living? How is he sleeping? Why? Why has nobody, the U.S. Marshals, why has nobody seen him? Why? Why? Just like in the case from here in Arizona of Alicia Navarro, four years, she walked into a police department in Haver, Montana, after being missing for four years. Not a sighting, nothing. Poof, just vanished. Her mom endlessly continued to make sure her face and her name and everything were out here. Four full years. It happens all the time. Unfortunately, it does. Trey, as far as your question goes about the criminal investigation, that's from a month ago. And there has been no other anything that's not a new development that was stated a month ago. And there's nothing that's changed that's pretty common in these types of situations. And I will explain some of that as we go through the next one. Is there nothing about him? Why is there no physical evidence? Oh, cheesy. That makes sense. <laughs> We always give her shit about spelling story wrong. <laughs> Thank you. You know, all I know is I am holding on to a wing and a prayer. Me, I'm holding on to a wing and a prayer. And I pray every day and every night he's found. 
the question remains. The bottom line is this. <clears throat> Sebastian Rogers went missing from his home in Hendersonville, Tennessee. And there's just as many questions today as there was on February 26, the morning he was reported missing by a three-way call from his stepdad and in Memphis, supposedly, and his mom in Hendersonville. Absolutely. He was last seen by his mother at his family's home on Stafford Court in Hendersonville. Many, many people and agencies have searched and are still searching. People have asked to share his information about <coughs> conversations they may have had with Sebastian, what he liked, what he liked to do, where he liked to go. I, I would like to see more people. <coughs> Excuse me. I would like to see more. Okay. Okay. Bear with me here because you'll, many of you will see why this is interesting. Not only is she really pissed about telling the facts that there's no, there's no evidence to prove that Chris and Katie have done anything. She had a hard time spitting that out. She was actually really frustrated that she had to say that. But listen to where she's going to head with this. I bet money that pretty soon we will see people come out with these types of interviews more people come out that knew Sebastian. Trina, how it fucking embarrassing for you. How fucking embarrassing to be Chi Rev's top girl. Is that kind of like a bottom bitch? Are you like one of T Rev's bottom bitches? By the way, let me show you something right quick. T Rev's music isn't even registered to him. I got a copyright for his music, which I don't care because it doesn't matter to me. I do this for fun, not anything else. But uh, T Rev's music isn't even his own. It's owned by another company. Um, so that's embarrassing to be like running around saying, T Rev, I'm T Rev's top girl. Look at that's who it's actually. I mean, that's a you thing, not a me thing. And or call in to any of these shows. Embarrassing. You don't want your face shown. <coughs> Excuse me. First of all, don't call me baby. You're probably not going to like it over here because I have a tendency of saying what I think when I want. T Rev's an exploiter, an opportunistic little punk ass, terrible, whatever you want to call him. He exploits these cases. He feels nothing but misinformation, exploitation to the 10th degree. Every one of his hashtag clickbait titles of Sebastian Rogers possible sighting when there hasn't been one yet. Miss me with your bullshit. Have a beautiful, blessed day. I'm sure T Rev will probably pray for you later. And talk about Sebastian, his teachers. Um, if you don't feel comfortable saying things, that's fine. Tell us about him, what he liked. There may be a clue in there. Friends, mothers, if you have <coughs> children that were his friends, and I have no doubt. So now she wants kids that he went to school with for their parents to call into these speculation stories, all of this bullshit, so they can have more content to run with, even though we know that they won't vet it. They won't even know if they're actual friends of his. And I hope to God, nobody from his school would ever overstep that boundary. But we'll see. But that's what she's calling for. Oh, he had friends. Call in and tell us what your children have said. Please, anything to help find him. Anything that may be helpful. Thank you, TT. Be ready. Thank you so much. Let's talk about him, Sebastian. Why would they do that? 
That's not the salacious gossip that they want. Why not talk about the missing child? No, they would rather just sit there and play games with the parents in their past and release all this private information about Sebastian when that doesn't help. Doesn't help at all. Sebastian's still missing. Sebastian is lost in his own story because of creeps like this who continue to exploit him for clicks and views. Sebastian is lost. I don't care what you feel about the parents. This isn't about them. This is about finding Sebastian, right? So until we have any other reason to condemn anybody and know what happened to Sebastian, we're jumping the gun. Because anything that's said about him or told about him, it may be helpful in finding him. You may hold the key and you may not know that. Call law enforcement. Law enforcement, not these fools. There's been many, 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 many times. I've just had dumb chats. I've just had dumb chats. In my opinion, that has nothing really to do with the case. I may just be on here having fun because I can do that sometimes. I may do things or say things that I don't even know. And I will get phone calls literally as soon as I get my phone will be blowing up my emails and people will say, you don't really know, do you? I don't know what you don't know what you just said or did. What did I just say or do? You don't know. I would be asking you if I knew what are you, what are you talking about? You helped because of X, Y, Z. What? No, I didn't think about it that way. Oh, I'm sure your phone, phone's just being blown up, right? I'm sure you're getting so many accolades for all the rumors that you're spreading. Meanwhile, Sebastian's still missing. I'm sure. And I don't. I just say what I mean, and I mean what I say, and I mean it from my heart, and I mean it from my head. And if it helps anyone, so be it. That's what I'm here for. That's what you should be here for. So if you knew Sebastian, if you knew him, anybody you know knew him, your child, anything, you don't have to call in and say, I was his physical therapist. You don't have to violate HIPAA. You don't have to do any of that. Use common sense. They want his therapist to call in. What the fuck world do these people live in? This is a minor child who has privacy. They're entitled to privacy. Confidentiality. Yes. But if you knew him or you saw anything going on with a parent or something, call in to it. Don't have to be my channel. I don't care. I'm not about clicks and views. I don't care. Call in somewhere and tell somebody talk about sebastian like law enforcement law enforcement's the only place you should be calling if you have any evidence or know anything in regards to sebastian's whereabouts it also keeps his name and face out there that's what we want They may not want that. And the person guilty or people guilty. And I say guilty because it don't take a rocket scientist, in my opinion. Guilty of what? We have no proof that a crime has been committed, you fucking numbskull. To know this boy did not leave on his own. If he left on his own, there would be cameras showing so. If he left on his own, then it would be like the time that he got under the car three doors down in a neighbor's house. Now, I was trying to tell T. Rev in the chat yesterday when the caller called in. I don't think he saw that. But here's the deal on that. One time, I don't know when. I, I don't know how close it was to him uh, disappearing. 
on one of the dispatch calls, there is two dispatch calls, or it was broken into two. I've got both of them somewhere. Anyway, I posted both of them. On the first dispatch call, and I had to go back and hear it, you can hear law enforcement talking about they spoke to a neighbor three doors down. And at one time, Sebastian was under their car. So I feel like if he left, he would have been found and he would not have got far. That's my opinion and my opinion only. And your opinion sucks. It was in the JLR's chat room. Okay. Well, y'all go watch JLR and... Oh, yeah. Go watch the king of misinformation. Please do. JLR. He's just the golden child of, you know, all things speculation, trolls, and misinformation. I will definitely research that. All I can hope is continue to share his photos. And if you know anything about any information, hopefully they will find him. Hopefully they'll find him safe. If not, justice hopefully will come. And they, Ellie, knows who did anything wrong. And bless his heart. Please, please, please pray for that man. You know, I'll throw in a prayer for Katie because you know what? She needs to get a grill. She did give birth to him. She had to love him at some, you know, but to a put put um put a man and money over your child, I don't give a damn. And where is the evidence to prove that that's what happened? So, you know, y'all need to go do your own digging. The main thing is keep these alerts and these flyers out, pass out everything. And don't forget to call into the show if you might know something about missing Sebastian. Please don't. Please contact law enforcement. All right, moving right along to the next one because you know the gifts just keep on giving. I was really hoping we were done with this this one over here because she just grates my nerves. But of course, she's back on it too. So she had to run with all this stuff. So we're going to start at the 132 minute mark and there's this is going to get very passionate and very heated. So if you are sensitive and do not like real talk and cussing, probably not the live for you. See your way out. Have a wonderful day. I don't blame you at all. I just don't sugarcoat shit. Not going to do it today, tomorrow, or any other day. All right. Nancy Kerrigan versus Tanya Harding. Oh, my God. Can you please add skank ass Tanya Harding to that, please? Please and thank you. <laughs> Not so bad that account yet, please, either, because I love that I'm being called skank ass Tanya Harding. <laughs> I don't even understand that, but all right, this is allegedly with no brain cells. Um, again, all under fair use. This is based on my opinion, my opinion only. I will be giving her a few little accolades in this because she did, but it's so uncomfortable. But we're, you'll see where we're going. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I first of all, how many of you believe that it was only one time? No, no, no. not. Was there no anybody? No. And, and I promise you, drop a one in chat if you anybody believes that the bell incident was one time. I promise you, I'm not going to come for you or say anything. I just, I'm going to say it right now one, 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 one. It was not one time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, same, yeah, same, same. Because, uh, remember, remember the remember the interview? Mm -hmm. CP yeah. was bragging about it. Wait a minute. It had Wait, to be more time. God, God just outside. listening to him talk though, that um video I seen of was it sweet pie, whatever her name is. Yeah. Sweetie Pilo. We're gonna go. Yes. Oh go my gosh, them. just watching her entire video, the clips, like I want to strangle him. I just yeah. wanna so they're talking about the video that we just watched from Sweetie Pilo. That's what they're talking about. Just bear with us. There's a whole lot to dissect here. And is it bad? Like, because um, I, I haven't, I want, there's, there's so much because I saw it on Justin's today. 
I want to go through, is it Pascal's interview where he's talking about Sebastian have, having to wear pull-ups? I, I do think that. Uh, we need it was to, just crazy. Everything I was sending you today is everything that Justin did on his lineup. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I like, mean. And he did it after I sent it to you. I was like, look, look, look. Don't you know, I'm just wrong, you all this stuff. I don't, yeah, I don't want to mimic Justin. I love him, and I, you know what I mean? But everything that he talked about today was just like, I was like, oh, my God, I need to. It was like. Yeah, because uh, Justin's called the melatonin of YouTube. He is probably the worst of the worst. I'm sure you would love to mimic him because he exploits these cases one after another. Docs' essay victims, you know, he really has some sort of fetish for these missing children. And again, not calling him a Pete but he gets giddy about situations like this. He is one of the most disgusting, in my opinion. I just don't review him very often because I seriously pull my hair out when I listen to him. He is ridiculous. He was attempting to run with the fact that there was cops in the neighborhood at the Crowdfoots last night. Then they had some local lady go drive by the home to verify that nothing was going on at the home. I need, I'm a balloon built up and I need to like let all my air out and really like to just oh, yeah. all of this. I'm like, oh my God, it was such yeah. a good show. But, um, uh, and plus like, I mean, even though Justin already kind of talked about some of this, it's still going to be a little different because we're different people. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, it's just interesting. I'm we're all almost, thinking on the same page because it's not like, you know, we're, we're, uh, copying him. It's just like, we're covering the same page. So. Start. Yeah. I'm almost, I'm almost afraid to say what I think at this point, but I'm going to anyways because the last time, the yeah, last time I was it. attacked uh, for saying that bedwetting was a sign of. Uh, All right, for those of you that don't know what this is about or what this is referencing to, so when Brittany J and her panel of no brain cells brought this up last time, there was no nothing. Seth had not come out and told stories of what allegedly has happened to Sebastian when they were in California. There was none of that. So they got critiqued, rightfully so, and she's about to get her ass ripped again. So if you think that this was going to go over and you're going to get some sort of retraction, what you did the first time was disgusting, but you even upped it a notch this time around. This is the woman that sat on that panel and was talking about why he might have incontinence issues a child being violated. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I was attacked, even though that was not just mm -hmm. talking out of my patootie. I had actually done all the research on bedwetting and things like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And turns out, guess what? I was right. And I'm not, I'm not giving myself a pat on the back. I'm just saying, um, who the fuck, who the fuck even tries to do this and say, I was right. Who gets giddy over being right that a child allegedly was sexually abused? Lady, you are fucking sick. That's it. That's all. Who gets giddy over that? And by the way, you weren't attacked. It's called criticism. Get some fucking thicker skin. I, I would. Well, you should. You know. Um, I would uh, be afraid you to speak my mind. About. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, in this case, I have to say, Chris Proudfoot and Katie Proudfoot are sketchy AF. And I believe that they absolutely either know what happened and why he left or they have done something. And, and he is either um, like pe some people speculate that uh, they might have uh, done, you know, put him somewhere else or caused him great bodily harm that ended his life. And uh, that is what I'm sticking with. They're guilty. They're guilty of what? They're guilty of what? So she first starts off giving herself a pat on the back that he was sexually abused according to what Seth released. Again, nothing that we should have ever known. And there are so many other factors to why he could have incontinence issues. If you actually did the research, you would have realized that the chromosomal deletion could have made that anything. But she's over here patting herself on the back. She doesn't need a pat on the back from you guys though. She's gonna pat herself enough because she thinks she was right. How sick to get joy in that. They're guilty. Look. He's barefoot. Mom's story keeps changing. He's lying. He won't take a polygraph. He's he's talking around it in circles. Like this is obvious. Yeah. Sadly. He thinks Chris thinks he's got this. How many times? Under how many throat. times in the life saying he did take a um, polygraph? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I would also like to say to the people that did attack me and say that I was wrong for insinuating that, I appreciate you proving me right. Mm. Well, they it. don't you appreciate Seth? 
releasing private information about Sebastian so you could say that you were right about incontinence issues of a missing minor child? Ma'am, I think you need to log off and go touch some fucking grass or smoke some because you have lost all connection with reality. You are giddy over the fact that his dad released private personal information that was not necessary for the internet to know and he's still missing. It's okay, Regina. They, they're they going to uh, nitpick and attack anything and everything that comes from over here because it's not about Sebastian or this case. It's it's a sick obsession with hate. That's all. Um, period. So you cannot take criticism for your own actions. It's always, it's all about hate. I don't even care enough about you to hate you. I think you're a disgusting, vile human being who spreads misinformation on our most vulnerable. And that's our missing children, especially missing children with special needs. I think you're a sick bitch who exploits the hell out of this and you're nothing but an opportunist. That's what I feel. But you can call me hate filled. You can say I'm miserable. You can do anything you want. It doesn't affect me whatsoever. I will still remain right here cussing your ass out with a smile on my face and I'll sleep fine tonight. Worried about Sebastian. Worried about what actually matters in this case and that is Sebastian. What I've figured out is that they have the same thoughts and feelings as us but they're scared to say it publicly because they want to look good. No. Sir, Sarah, Sarah, how many times am I going to have to tell you to shut the fuck up? You sound like an idiot. No. I sure as hell do not agree with anything that you have ever said over there. Not one bit. Because you've thrown out so much misinformation. And I do not think that the parents are involved. We don't have any evidence to prove that they are. I'm hopeful that Sebastian is still alive. I'm hopeful that something happened, whether it be in his personal life, whether it be anything. And he de decided to dip out and he will be found. That's what I'm hoping for. I don't agree with a goddamn thing you guys have tried to speculate about. I'd be like, oh, I'm for the family, for the victims. Well, guess what? I'm for the child or the adult that's missing. And if they don't have a voice and I can see things that need to be said, I'm going to be that voice for them, period. Oh, yeah. You're such a voice for the victims. Did you get a like a shout out in T-Rev's voice for the victims, voice for the voiceless song? It's point right. blank, period. Get over it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, my goodness. Real quick, I'm going to give a shout out to Ivamos. Why'd you do it? You didn't have to do that, sweet lady. Thank you. Aww. It's raining. Welcome. It's <laughs> raining memberships. Woo -woo. Thank you Somebody so much. Somebody gave me one, and I don't know who did Yay. it, but whoever did it, I just want to say thank you. Oh, yeah. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Throw those umbrellas out, guys. What I love this community. Somebody said it a while ago. They were like, everybody's going to be green. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Hey, oh, snap, Sharon. Good to see you. Thank you, I've almost. I love you. Thank you for being an awesome friend and a mod. Uh, hey, hey, foe, honey. <laughs> Good to see you. All right. Let's, I'm going to play the rest of this, guys. We only got like maybe three minutes and then we'll get into a uh, our combo. I love you, Regina. So I love three, you too, Nana. Was it so good to see you. Was it when he was 15 years old? Um, another question. Allegations that Sebastian was molested have now emerged. What can you tell us? From Seth Rogers. Uh, Sebastian's biological father, Seth Rogers, said that when the Proudfoots, when uh, Katie and Chris Proudfoot and Sebastian were living in an apartment in California a couple of years, several years ago, that Katie Proudfoot allowed a uh, boy that was five years older than Sebastian to play with Sebastian. And the boy was 13. Sebastian was eight at this time. She allowed, Seth Rogers said that Chris, uh, Katie Proudfoot allowed a 13-year-old boy to play with Sebastian, who was eight, un without any kind of involvement from Katie Proudfoot, and that during the time. Yeah, the volume's low on their side. Sorry, it is hard to hear on this one, but the closed captioning is on. This 13-year-old molested and raped Sebastian Rogers. It seems the more we investigate, um, the murkier the facts become. This is what I know. Every day, literally every hour that Sebastian Rogers is missing, is one hour closer to him being dead. Can we tune out all the static and the noise and try to focus on finding this autistic boy? Shut the fuck up, Nancy. You goddamn grifting piece of shit, misinformation spreading, salacious, scandalous. Ooh. She is like the ringleader of all of these people. This is what they strive to be. And she does more harm than good, in my opinion. She has put out so much misinformation and so much information that's already been fact-checked by the TBI. All for a show. To you, Mr. Proudfoot. 
our offer is still on the table for a polygraph free of charge to you. I'll pay for it out of my pocket. We wait as the search goes on. Goodbye, friend. Guys, thank you for watching Crime Online with Nancy Grace here on you. Mm. I love, I love her. See, she says, well, I think I, I've been thinking she said good night, friend, but she says goodbye, friend. Because <laughs> that's okay, what you I can say. It, you say it your way. <laughs> I still say in the words of the legend, Nancy Grace, right, good night, friend. Good night, friends. <laughs> I, I like good night, friends. I've, I've been saying good night, friends. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. Let's let me get to the next thing. I am going to introduce a trigger warning. Uh, shout, guys! Should we um, should we go through, um, sweetie Paolo? Should we go ahead and do it? Because uh, it's kind of hard. That was really good. All right, let's do. Shout out! That was what we just watched. That was really good. Not vetted. Complete character assassination. That was wonderful. Round of applause for their heroes. She's not Paolo. She is awesome. I think I think it's important because we've heard the legality sides and accusations from Katie's side. And this mm -hmm. is the side of the court proceedings and divorce and, and is it part the part, allegations and all that addressed on Seth's side and their court documents. Is it part one phone call with anonymous couple regarding Sebastian Rogers surveillance? I forgot mm -hmm. about that. Or is Sebastian Rogers, the gloves are off. I think it's that one. The gloves are off. But what about, about that phone call? Hold on, with because I sent couple. you it. Hold on. Yeah, it's this one. I, I recognize that because of the thumbnail. But it's still interesting. There's one with a phone call with an anonymous couple. I haven't seen mm -hmm. that, sweetie Pilo. You are... um. Let me find out, lady. You are on. You are uh, doing some things. Right. Yeah, she's doing a whole lot, like pushing off horrible, horrible allegations and accusations without proof. She's doing the most. What we mean by that? Okay. okay. I'm have, do we have timestamps by any chance? I don't even remember. I'm gonna have to. I have learned something as I've been doing this. The reason, in my opinion, again, this doesn't go for every panel that or a channel that has a panel like this. But a lot of these creators, such as Brittany, do a panel like this because they don't have to be responsible for the content that they do. So they ask other people for the timestamps. They ask other people to do, you know, what should we talk about? Other people's opinions so they can plead the fifth that they don't have to take responsibility for the comments. This is why she does this. And people flock to that because it's that parasocial relationship and people need to feel needed. So they do her content for her, get timestamps, do all that stuff. All she does is come on there and hit the play button. Um, Kim, all I know on Sweetie Pilo, the bite marks were at 851. And this, okay. That was interesting to me. Oh, um, Kelly yeah. Epperson, I'm glad you're here tonight. Thank you. There's so many of you that have said that tonight. She did. Were y'all, did y'all really think? I she did edit this one, it looks like. I wasn't going to come back. I just got mad. That's all. That, I've seen like five or six people already say they're glad I'm here tonight. Um, Kim M2, thank you for the super right. sticker. I, I love you. I'm not getting rid of that easy. No. Um, Britt, if I might say something real quick, um, I think it is. I think it is so imperative that we know what went on in Sebastian's everyday life because I think it yeah. is very, very important in factoring in the two main possibilities of what has happened here. Yep. Either he ran off, either he ran off because of what was going on at home that he could not take anymore, whether it was at the hands of the Proudlets or not. Okay. Um, they're suggesting that he left the house on his own accord. And I have to know why he would leave. What? Why would he be upset enough? to leave the house on his own accord. And I think that is very important to the searchers looking for him because we need to know what mental anguish this child might be going through that he would refuse to divulge himself to searchers. Ma'am, first of all, you don't need to know shit because he's not your kid. Law enforcement needs to know. You don't need to know shit, truthfully. Right. That is that is my point on, it, on, on the agree. abuse system. Yeah. Hey, and Erica. Welcome, or way Erica. he disappeared, you know. Exactly. Exactly. I think everything about what happened in Sebastian's life is relevant to finding him. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real and quick. This is just an excuse for all of their sick rumors that they love to spread. None of that has given us any insight to where Sebastian could be. Not a single bit. 
doesn't change any of the facts as they stand. Law enforcement was privy to that information. They, the internet's not. It's turned into a nothing but a show. I just want to agree that. I just want to say real quick, you, I couldn't say it better, uh, Regina. Uh, Erica says, hey, Brittany, from, I'm from CJ's page. Thank you, Miss Erica, for finding us and coming over to hang out. I hope you like it over here and you stay with us. Miss Carrie Chatterbox, how are you, sweetheart? It's been a long time. Well, I hope you're doing good. It's so good to see you back here. All right. And anybody else coming in? Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, Hobby. Hey, Lady Tinkerbell. Yeah, and CJ is so supportive of you. Oh, yeah, he's awesome. He just has so much nice things to say about you. Okay, but let me just clarify this really quickly. Oh, yeah. They're trying. This is interesting. If you were here the other day, you know why she's doing this, but I'll correct her again. Trying to start some stuff. CJ is an awesome mm -hmm. co-creator. I adore him just like I adore uh, T-Rev and Ernest and Regina uh, and every other creator who I work with. But that's as far as it goes, because I know that that little stupid rumor is trying to be started. I No, I didn't try to start a rumor. All I said was I thought you were flirting with him. I didn't know nothing about your personal life. Don't give a shit about your personal life. I apologize for it. But I didn't know. It was not that big of a deal. It's not that deep. You said you weren't flirting with him. Big fucking deal. I'm not trying to start a fucking rumor, you wackadoodle. I love oh, my don't man. even. Okay, I'm just saying that. I love my man. He has him. an immensely uh, caring soul. He is yes. very kind-hearted. This, I, I can totally understand why she's got a group of people that can't stand her. Totally get it. Because that wasn't even remotely what was happening there. But she's like, poor me, I'm such a victim. They're trying to start a rumor. Because I fucking said she acted because all she did was <laughs> every time CJ would do something stupid. That's it. Now that he did and just I love my man. To do the right I absolutely love my man. And if somebody said, Oh, I thought nonsense was flirting with XYZ, I'd be like, probably not. Probably not. Not that fucking deep. I wouldn't start rumors that, oh, they're trying to ruin my relationship. Right thing in hell. Absolutely. And uh you know. Is this where we're going to start with the bite marks? I don't know. I just, right I, I like that. I wrote it down because I was very intrigued by that. Is this where we start? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I I watched it from the beginning because I didn't want to like miss any details. Let's we'll start from the beginning. You know what I mean? Okay. Littleton attacker. But it is a good picture. Right there. There's a video up ahead. Oh the my woman, God. The woman beats an autistic child on the bus. What? She's, it's her job to, to ride a bus with him. What? And, him. and she beat him so bad that she broke his jaw. And oh. bones and things. Oh my and goodness. They just let it right back out. Are you freaking kidding me right and now? They said this ain't even the first child, really. Okay, oh, oh, see, oh, and you, oh my God. They, they do worse to this, dog. Wait, is that little punk ass bitch in here? No, is he in here? Oh, T Breath, are you warning me? Warning me on what, little man? What are you going to do? Doesn't look like you've got another side of your house. Are you in here? I'll give you the attention that you deserve. Okay, and we're going back to it. That's all the attention I have for him. Carry your punk on. Punk little opportunistic ass on out of here. Have a great day. And be blessed with your exploitation and your spirit boxes, which is an AM, FM, hand crank radio. Oh, it's going to attack people. Wrong. Like, this is... And they're right back out on bond. And they got a video on the bus of her. You can watch it. There's a video I, I can't watch that she shit. Go on, big boy. Send me that cease and desist. I'll show you a fire. I'll show you a fire with it. It's a piece of paper. This is called I am free to criticize and commentate on your poor shitty behavior. Don't like it. Don't put it out here publicly. Don't put clickbait in your titles. It's actually misinformation and against terms of service. There hasn't been one single sighting of Sebastian Rogers. And you've used that for titles of your videos for days on end. Probably not the one you want to fuck with, you little punk. And does this, look. No. She elbows him and... How and old is he? Oh, my God. He's a little boy. looks just like uh, one of our boys. He's little. She needs to be put oh. down. Everybody's Sorry, I'll say it. There's people on Twitter saying she's hurting it. Yeah, so breaking, so you guys, I hope her mama and his mama, and, uh, see, that's why I don't put my kids on the bus, that shit right there. Exactly. Listen, breaking, uh, suspected Littleton, 
attacker is out on bond. The news comes despite Kiara Jones having been charged with severely beating multiple children in the Denver school oh district, Lord. leaving an autistic wow. boy with fractured bones and missing teeth. Oh my gosh. What? How did she get out? out on bond and she's got multiple charges? There's a special place for people like that. Yeah. You guys, mm -hmm. this is right. sadly, sadly, this is more common than you would think. And it's been happening to our children on school buses for a very long time. That's the reason I support it's, cameras it's on horrible. school bus. Yeah. Yes. Um, my you missed the boat there, dude. You missed the boat. You're not even being talked about. Stop trying to distract my chat. Go cry somewhere else. Maybe somebody will loan you a tissue. I'm sure your subs will buy you some. My little sister was six years old and our bus driver, um, Miss Barb, got up, stopped the bus and went and got my little sister's face and was- Oh, thanks for my little. Well, even if it is, I still said what I said. Arguing with my little sister and I was just letting the argument roll. And she wrenched back and backhanded my little sister and knocked her down. Mm -hmm. And I was 14 oh. at the time, I believe, 13, something like that. Needless to say, I almost got kicked out of school for what I did to that bus driver. But whenever oh, they good. went back and watched the video, my parents actually uh, oh, sued God. the school district and everything. Oh, but this good. does go on. Wow, this does go on. Like Jesus. I and just it, don't understand why a dog can attack a person wow. and they put him down. But a human yeah. can attack a child. And get away right. with it, like a slap yeah. on the wrist. What is this is exactly. wrong with this world and this justice? Exactly. System? Yeah. And I, and this is why it is so fucking important for people to be factual. You are actively involving yourself in an active investigation of a missing child with rumors and speculation and running with misinformation. Our justice system is so broken as is. They are releasing habitual offenders, sex offenders, over and over again that commit heinous crimes. Because of our justice system being broken and people fighting to get justice to begin with. Truthfully, the fight to even get justice for some of these families that have gone through these tragedies and then to turn around and the offender gets released right away. That is why it's so important to shed light on the actual facts of what happens. To stop saying somebody is guilty of something before we even know if a crime is committed because our justice system is lacking in so many ways. What you guys do doesn't help. And it's ironic that you can point it out about that, but you can't see what you're doing by actively involving yourself in spreading misinformation and rumors in an active missing child's case. I yeah. mean, I, this, this is no offense to people. Listen, mm -hmm. some parents that, you know, we don't have a choice. We got our kids have got to go to school one way or another. And <laughs> some parents have no choice, you know, in the matter of putting their mm -hmm. kids on buses. So I don't want to come true. off like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I get it yeah. if you don't have a choice. But if you do have a choice mm -hmm. and it's just merely convenient, get up and take them. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Yeah. You yep. don't know. They, the, the school system will hire anybody on. They don't care. Mm -hmm. You don't know who's yeah. driving them buses. You really it don't. It's very true. All right, I'm going to play this, you guys. I, Craig, I love him, and he, I know oh, he, he shares it with me because it bothers him, but that shit's going to yeah. eat. It'll consume me tonight. I won't. Oh, my God. I hate that. I hate those kind of stories. A message, though, I think it's fair to implore to all parents here is ask your children what's going on Yes, in their lives. At, talk to yeah. your children yeah, yeah, and believe yeah. your children when they tell you something. Exactly. Don't, don't, right. don't brush it off. Please. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to play. We're going to start at the scratch marks. This is Proudfoot's arm, you guys. Look, she's That's got great fantastic. she's got great yeah. views of it compared to the ones I got. Look, you can see it. They must have changed the color. You can see it really good. Do you really arm. think a dog did that? No. Nope. Nope. Shh. This, this dumbass. Did she? She even says they must have changed the color on the saturation of the photo. But just wait, it gets better. No, it the marks really are not do. close enough no. together. No, and everyone's, like, four and everyone's oh, like, this is a week later. They're Those are fresh. No, they're not. They're not fresh. And, you know, I've had... But how can you tell in a highly edited photo that Brittany just obviously even realized, too, they changed the saturation on it? So how do we know how old these scratches are? Truthfully. But they're going to continue to run with it. And Sarah's over there giving herself ass pats again because we all say, we can, a lot of us continue to say, there's no proof of that being from Sebastian whatsoever. This was eight days. The interview was eight days after he went missing. But the, again, they're set. 
on exactly what they think, even though this is a highly edited photo. I've had injuries on me that last more than a week and still look red. They could be infected. It could look fresh and it's not like, I don't, you know, and why did they wait a week to go on camera? What were they waiting for to heal? But what were they only, hiding? but like your child. Wait, chat. I'm going to ask you some questions. Just get ready. Cause we're going to do some quizzes. What's missing is that you were messing with the dog and made it do that. Right. Um, and then you wait a week to go on camera for why? I mean, and those are not they're exactly doing don't make stuff. sense. No, it doesn't. So mm -hmm. if it don't make sense, it's not true. I mean, all right. Let's what? <laughs> see what? Let's let's hear what it, hear what they say. Hear what this is about. From there, I got to thinking about the kind of potential abuse. Trigger warning again. If you weren't here for this part before, this is absolutely disgusting, but you'll see where we're headed with this. And sorry, I'm not laughing at the situation. It's absolutely disgusting. I'm laughing at the lack of brain cells between all of them on that panel. That I believe poor Sebastian endured in that household. A very reliable source shared some information with me. I'm going to play you a clip real quick. I want to give a shout out to Sweetie Pie Low, guys. We'll get her link in chat in just Society a minute. And I'll be part of the problem. Can we talk oh. about that? Can we talk about the diapers real quick? Sure. I'm glad you mentioned that. What's up with the diapers? Can you break that down for me? Because I've heard that many different times in many different uh, comments and, and, and chat forms and all that. Can you just explain right. a little bit? Of this is coming back around again. I, I hate even doing this, but it's important because you guys will see what bullshit they're going to run with. About this diaper situation? Um, he was having accidents at school. And Chris got tired of Katie taking clothes to him to change clothes. So he made him wear a bullet. Mm. Which is actually one of those things that happens to children that are abused. He would come to my house. First thing he did when he came in, I was like, take those damn things off, go take a shower, put on some underwear, some comfy clothes. Because we're men. We wear our boxers. We wear our boxer briefs. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're not wearing pull-ups. And no accidents here. But All right. That right there. And I want to be clear about something. Because me and freaking Regina got our heads cut you know knocked off for daring even talk bitch if your head was knocked off trust me it wouldn't be back on you still wouldn't be talking stop playing the victim here you got called out on putting in salacious sense speculation that wasn't needed it's still the fact that you're giddy about him having that type of abuse is disgusting absolutely fucking disgusting but you can't sit and go oh my god I can't believe that that's really what the cause was, even though we don't know what the cause of this incontinence issue is. We don't even know the truth behind that at this point. Talk about trauma. Trauma can be numerous things, but I just want to point this out. Seth said that Sebastian did not have accidents at his house. Why? What, why? This is what no I've said there. from the beginning. There must have been something why. happening. He, he, yeah, he was mistreated, being hit with a belt, being mm -hmm. screwed. Seth said mm -hmm. that, and everything that I'm saying, I'm basing mm -hmm. off of what has come from Seth's mouth, the bio, and what has come from Katie Proudfoot and Chris Proudfoot. Seth said that Sebastian did not think that his own mother and his stepdad liked him because they yelled at him all the time. It, thank you, thought criminal. That. That is why I believe that he regressed when he went back home. We have no idea. We have no idea the cause of any of this. Truthfully, we have no idea. And here she is running with this. He was I petrified. He was so okay. Sad. Absolutely, Brittany. Absolutely. I think he was petrified. Yep. And I think that Sebastian was probably really looking forward to living with his dad and not being treated that way anymore. And it's so sad oh, that he hurt. never it breaks my heart. made it. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm no, because his dad said, his dad said, y'all, he, he told him, son, it's almost over. It's not. So Seth is just on a save over here. He's just the most honest person to ever, ever grace themselves with the missing child and then the mom and the stepdad are just the devils what but yet who's 
Never mind. I'm not even going to go into that. Not going to be too much longer. And then you're going to be living with me and you don't have to worry about them yelling after you no more. They were, mm -hmm. they were counting the days out. They were waiting on it. Absolutely. Uh, see, and, and CJ says, well, Brittany, thank you for, for in your community for positive tidal waves in the ocean of truth and justice. Well, thank you, CJ. And thank you for you and your community mm -hmm. as well. I appreciate you. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I fell off a panel. I had a, I will, I will talk. Had some crazy stuff happening. Um, it's been a wild one. CJ, but, uh, you're awesome. Yeah, I'll drop the link, CJ. If you want to come up, you can join us. We're going through some uh, some of the harder uh, parts of the Regina, uh, case. Regina, I will give yes, you some insight on that. Trigger warning. Extreme trigger warning. Mm -hmm. I was a young child, and I was beat by my stepmother every day. And I also was essayed by her father. Oh, God. I wet my bed till I was 14. Oh, Jesus. Sorry, Nana. I'm so so sorry don't let anybody you. tell you it doesn't oh, no. happen. I'm no, sorry. that is a, No, I do want to. No, I, I don't I'm, want any I'm, sympathy. I'm good. I'm just saying. It happens. Either way, I just want you to know I'm sorry that you had to go through that. Yeah. yeah. No, it's okay. Let me put I'm, a I'm good. I didn't get any help me. because nobody believed me, but Jeez. it's okay. Mm. I'm, a, I'm a strong Nana. person. Might I just say, I'm so proud you. of you. I believe you also, Warrior. but I just want to say, I'm so proud of you for. By the way. This is so fucking cringe. There's no need when somebody tells their story to come in and say, I believe you. If you lie on that side all the time of the victim side. You don't need to say, I believe you. She wasn't looking for people to say they believe her. She obviously shared that story, not caring if you did or not. That is so cringe to me. We believe you. Like, what the fuck? She was just sharing. Like, that, oh my God. Overcoming this and being able to share that. Because some people will take mm -hmm. their trauma and turn it against others. And you have not done that. You have become a kind, compassionate person out of mm -hmm. your place of pain and tragedy. And I love you for that. And I appreciate you, Nana. Do you I know why I thought this happened to me? It's because I think she was SA too. And I was only 10 uh, when it started. Geez. But I was smart enough to know this happened to her. And I felt sorry for her. Because if it happened to me, it had to happen to her. I'm, I'm really, I, I am, I do. But, I do, but I do. I'm just, I guess the point I was trying to make is it does happen. And so you were not wrong. It's just not, it's not a hundred percent that people go through this, No, but, it, but it's a lot. Cause I do want to make sure that it's not conflated. First of all, and what Nana went through is horrific and I'm sorry too, Nana. I, like, I don't wish that on any, it's horrible. No kid should ever have to endure, endure that. But I, I, I have to keep it separate and say, as far as Sebastian goes, the only thing that we have at all that points to that is what Seth said and that's what Seth said alone. As far as uh, going on in his home, his home, he was it, like, it makes me very, because I know I'm being watched like a hawk and they're going to rip me a new one. So she is admitting right here that the only reason why she's giving the disclaimer that there is no proof of this is because we're watching her words and the misinformation that she puts out there. That's really embarrassing, Brittany. But thank you for actually doing that because that's the way it should be. But it's so uncomfortable for you to do that. So that, we don't know anything about Sebastian. Uh, like, no, as far as we know, nothing like that's going on in his home. Uh, mm. You know what I mean? Like from the yeah, parents. It happened when he was what, younger. Yes. Uh, what, child. Yeah. So when I say that I, the, the whole bedwetting uh, and all of that, it's because of what, yeah, trauma. And he was scared and petrified. He was, yeah. But I just... But he felt that he felt a safe zone with his dad. I can't even have my own freedom of speech anymore, man. Bitch, this ain't about freedom of speech. It's about misinformation on a missing child's case. Cry me a fucking river. She had to correct it and say that there's no, there's no evidence of any of this stuff. This is just Seth's words. She cries because she can't run with speculation like that because her words are being watched. And she's pissing and moaning over her freedom of speech. Oh, yeah. God. No one taking nothing. He had a safe zone. Say what you God want bless to say, him. 
Well, yeah, it's all about good. being, it's all about being a voice for Sebastian. And I mm -hmm. think it is so important That's for right. us to do our research and know about his behaviors because it is about Sebastian, regardless of what anyone wants to think or anyone mm -hmm. wants to criticize anybody else. This little boy is missing and we need to find out where he is and what happened to him. Missing for too long. By the way, ma'am, he's not your child. You don't need to know anything about him, his personal life or anything. You already know too much and you think you're entitled to his private information. That's not helping bring him home. Amen. Um, so I wanna, real quick, let me read this from Thought Criminal. No, not Thought Criminal. That wasn't the one. Hold on, because there's somebody pointing this out. And I did. I caught on to this, too. Thank you, guys. I will go through them in the end. I'm trying not to be disrespectful and interrupt this as possible. Thank you, B-Tim. Akira, the initial police dispatch, you can hear the police say, yes, I just talked about this a second ago. You can hear the police say neighbors previously found Sebastian hiding under the neighbors. And B-Tim's comment is spot on, just for those in the back. That's freedom of speech, not freedom of consequences truthful vehicle katie said he wasn't a runner constant lies right okay that we need context to that so much because i mm -hmm. absolutely cannot look past that myself mm -hmm. I, because, oh, because she's asking for context good job Brittany. yesterday when i was going back to the beginning brit remember we talked about it yesterday i said not only do we have that to where he was obviously ran before and was hiding under the car we also have at the beginning of this on the flyer, it says that he was last seen that morning. Yeah. What? Yeah. So if this, ha if she really saw him last before midnight, why does that, why does the official flyer say that? It's what on the say? TBI's, it's on the TBI's Facebook page. It's on their post. It says that he was last seen the morning of, and it has the date oh. of the 26th, you know, February 26th. Mm -hmm. So you've got those two things. And there wasn't there one other thing I noticed too, but anyway, yeah, there's stuff. Oh yeah. And then during the dispatch, you hear the officers talking and the one officer tells the other one, yeah, down that path over there where he was running down. Yeah. And I'm like, huh? Exactly. So it's, it's bizarre. Hey, Michelle Reed Duncan. Welcome everybody. All right. Let's, let's hear what this caller uh, says. All right. Uh, just one, if I could, just for one second before you do, Brittany, you guys, if y'all haven't hit that like and subscribe, trigger warning you might need a puke bucket i highly suggest you do <laughs> Brittany is amazing she really does her best to break down these cases and oh, talk about these Virginia. children I like and i applaud her for what she does and i love oh, Brittany. I love and i think you. that if y'all stick She's around so you're gonna sweet. love her too oh. and don't forget to hit that membership if you like what you see and you're enjoying it because this is what Brittany does all the time and you're gonna get your money's worth i'm just saying oh, thank you you're spot on this is what Brittany does all the time exploits missing children exploits cases puts off misinformation i gotta give her credit she did ask for context and she had to correct her panel guest that was so uncomfortable for her though she about you could just tell it was really a struggle. A oh, I'm glad you found us too, Rachel Watson. Or is it is it Rochelle? Rachel or Rochelle? Not sure, but I want to make sure I get it right. Regina, you're <laughs> thank you. I love you. You're so sweet. <laughs> I'm just out here trying to treat everyone else like I want to be treated, you guys. That's right. I'm trying to stand up Rochelle. for what's right. Yeah, trying to stand up for what's right. Meanwhile, you were just patting yourself on the back for putting out the possibility and saying you were so right about possible. Nobody said that it's not a potential thing. It's just that that wasn't the only possible thing that could lead to incontinence. And it still isn't. It's still, we don't, we still don't even know that that is why he was having incontinence issues. We don't know any of that. And you're out here patting yourself on the back. Like you did something. How fucking appalling that you're cheering for yourself over a child possibly being essayed. I I guess I live in a different world than these people because what? Rochelle, okay. So God bless you, right right there, I mean. Regina. Yeah, and I'm proud of you, Regina. You are doing so good. Oh, thank you, KL Blaine. You guys are all y'all are y'all trying to swell my head. Look at you. I it's see what big. <laughs> I see what y'all doing over there. All right, you're so go. sweet. When he would go over there, he would be wearing diapers. When he went over there, it got to the point where 
he was forced to bring a diaper over here for when he left. He couldn't have underwear at their house. Really? Chris didn't want to wear an underwear. Chris wanted to wear a pull-up. This is the part that makes me mad. <laughs> Hold on. Not laughing at what's going on. But look at this comment on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay that's a good troll that's a great troll oh you're like the last person who actually was the first one to dox me that said that they hired an attorney to watch every one of my live streams for like three months <laughs> guess how far that got her <laughs> nowhere she still hides under alts <laughs> What has, <laughs> okay, that's creative as shit though, <laughs> Sanford and Sun Locker. <laughs> All right, A for creativity, that was good. <laughs> and by the way, if that's your client, holy fuck, I hope you're getting paid enough because my God, that guy is a complete travesty. And I hope that one of the parents actually ends up suing them because he's using their information. <laughs> okay, we all needed a laugh, sorry. Sorry, right in the midst of that, but that's that's some fucking good shit right there. That's a good troll. That's a good, <laughs> even I have to acknowledge that's a good troll. <laughs> I think he needs to spend more money on his spirit rocks. I mean, his AM FM crank radio <laughs> than worrying about me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Back to the, oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> oh, what is happening to these people? <laughs> Lottie da, right? <laughs> okay. Ooh. What? My son doesn't need to be in a pull-up. My son needs to be treated better. Accidents happen. No doubt. All right. But it must have an accident in my house. Real quick before we continue, I do want to give everybody a, a quick heads up. Please, guys, I have pinned it to the top. So what we have here is a situation where Chris Proudfoot more than likely was abusing him far more than he cares to admit. I mean, we know of mm -hmm. the we know of at least one one incident, but honestly. Heavy trigger warning, it's about to replay the other part, and I want you to hear what these guys are going to say. I think there were so many more incidents than that, one or two that he's actually admitted to. Because remember, Nancy Grace, he definitely tried to minimize it quite a bit. So I got into a conversation yesterday with a very reliable source. Guys, I wish I could tell you who it was, um, but they want to remain nameless. So just take this as, you know, allegedly or speculation, whatever you want to file it as. But they're very reliable. What they shared with me was information about Chris Proudfoot and the great lengths that his family would go to, to cover up for him. So the pretty much a conversation we were having, I was like, do you think, I mean, we, we know what, so a 15 year old, autistic or not, wearing diapers who is considered very high functioning, are we gonna consider that as normal or okay? Again, yes, yes, yes we are, if that's what we need to do. Yeah, absolutely, incontinence issues are absolutely acceptable. Yep, no matter what the age. Yep, if you have incontinence issues, yeah. We're going to accept it 100%. That doesn't seem right. Uh, uh, Regina gifted five memberships. Miss Thing, you didn't have to do that. Let me see. Let me go. I want to highlight it real quick. And um, let me see. I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to mute for just a second. My daughter is calling me. Give me just a second. Thank you so much, Regina. Welcome to the green team, everybody. Give me just a second. This is so frustrating. It's about to get worse too. I think we're gonna have to step outside. I'm getting antsy. Hello everybody. I'm here. Hey. I forgot I was muted. <laughs> well, I just thought it was silent. So it looks like no, I just I just want to tell the mods and I'm not I'm not your boss or anything, but please put up trigger warning because this is gonna get pretty graphic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, Nana. It really is. And it's yeah, so yeah. sad that that the oh. It's just horrible Sebastian had to go through all this, period. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. just, it blows my mind. And I watched it, I only heard mm -hmm. like a, a bit of it. Okay, so she clipped out a big portion of this. 
she actually clipped it out and there's a reason why there's a big reason why she clipped this out but we're going to continue to let it play some laura pops on panel and as hard as it is for me to do i will agree with a couple things she said but this is just ridiculous of wrong justins but that's why i had said you know, if you're going to come out with something like that, as, as heavy as that is, at least say who it's from. You know what I mean? If you're going to be, yep. if you're going to go so far as to, to put something out like that, that then you got to put the rest of it out too. Like, that's why I kind of saw it and was like, hmm, I don't know how I feel about this. The queen of inside sources is actually 10 to life. She started that whole trend no that way. you don't have to tell anybody who your inside source is. Mm -mm. Just be credible enough that you say an inside source and now everybody's going to run with it. And that's like basically that. what you did. Like I remember during Kylie Rodney, 10 to life was like, I have my inside source told me she's in Arizona. I guess your inside source is an idiot. So right. she did start that trend that just say it and people run with it. And mm -hmm. the amount of lives that I've like peeked in tonight and how many people are running with it. I'm like, oh my God, this is Summer Wells all over again. Does it, that's, over what again. It, that's what I just said. It reminds me of Summer Wells. This is why oh. I walked away from Summer Wells because it's like, I, I'll talk about the belt all day long. I have a problem with that, Laura. I do. He said that out of his own mouth. You know, I would need yeah. to get on the spectrum. There's my problem. Mm -hmm. The way that this kid was treated. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the SA part, even the part from Seth makes me uncomfortable, even mm -hmm. though that's his own dad saying it. <clears throat> I don't know. I just, but. I kind of feel like, and I could be wrong, but I kind of feel like, like, Brittany, you've gotten shit. I've gotten shit, oh, God, like, yeah. you know, falsely accused of stuff and everything else. And we know, like, how much power the internet actually has. So imagine being the family of a missing child. And I'm not saying they're innocent. I'm not saying they're guilty. But the amount of scrutiny these people are getting mm. before the cops even put them under arrest is horrendous. Like, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, maybe because I just take so much crap from the Internet that I feel differently. And I feel like we can't make them guilty before they're even a suspect. OK, I might have a temperature or something here because I'm actually agreeing with, the, with Laura. I'm actually agreeing with Laura. So we can't. This impacts the process of justice. This is why we have a justice system. Innocent until proven guilty. There is a reason for this. It is not the internet's job to convict somebody before there's even been evidence of a crime. In fact, this could easily impact the wheels of justice. This is absolutely spot on. We are convicting people of things before there's even been a crime committed, ever. You know, I mean, I know they're suspects, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Before they're interrogated by the police, before but, we have um, some kind of, you know, definitive uh, paperwork from the cops that he failed a lie detector, something. I'm mm -hmm. not saying he did anything. I'm just saying he's an asshole for what oh, he absolutely. Said. There you oh, go. That's the only thing I'm saying. That's also, the only thing I'm accusing him of. He's also, definitely an like, asshole. I would like to say real quick, I'm sorry, but Chris Pratt himself has already made himself a liar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let me give you a little synopsis of what was taken out. So there was all this back and forth. Laura actually hops on panel and they were starting to go off the deep end with some wild speculation. Once again, typical then she clips it out. The sweetie pilo stuff, because there's no confirmation. And Laura jumped on there and said that there was no confirmation and started putting sweetie where she is like, this source is embedded, all of that stuff. That's what Brittany clipped out. Was Laura confirming that that wasn't confirmed information? She clipped that out. Why? Why would you clip that out when she's correcting misinformation? I got to give credit where credit is due. And I, I, like I said, I might have a fever. But what Laura did here was shut down the misinformation. And it was necessary. Yeah. And that, that he cannot blame on anyone but himself. But and that girl. part I agree with. But he's got an excuse for that. I promise agree you. With that. They yeah. both lied. Katie lied too. Exactly. But you know about the belt. A few years ago. No, it wasn't a few years ago. If he was 15. You know. Like but do they you both are lying. So think, for why? Think about Put this. Put it all though. out there. Think about this though. And I have like weighed both sides of that. If that was you. 
and you're on national television and -hmm. you're talking to Nancy Grace about Mm -hmm. your missing child, do you think maybe that your first reaction would be, well, this has nothing to do with finding him. So why tell the whole truth? It's only going to hurt me in the end. Like, isn't that kind of what he did rather than, you know, like, where were you that night? Oh, I was at my mom's house. Meanwhile, there's footage of him, you know, Laura, next door. So that uh, kind of way. Yeah, but he are, already knew are you, that people were watching are you, implying, are you implying that Chris Pratt was more worried about his own appearance than he was telling the truth? He was. He was. Fashion? No. I don't but mean that's it what like you just that. Said he was, but, but that's what you just said. He was. Look at how uncomfortable they get. Look at how uncomfortable when somebody comes up and challenges the misinformation that they've been running with that there's a possibility that the parents aren't guilty of anything. Look at how uncomfortable they are. Yeah. I got to give credit where credit is due. Um, defending himself. I, think he's just lying to cover I do think he was worried about how, I mean, that's been a, a focal point though. That's like, the only reason any of them has said anything is because they were worried about, you know, what everybody was saying about them. Okay. I see all the comments in the chat and I know, I know we're all feeling that way, but she actually tried to redirect this. And I was, I, I was too stunned to speak myself at the moment. So I'm glad she at least attempted here. But watch how they try to spin this. And then you will hear this one continue to say, oh, oh we'll get there. That's when they started yeah, talking. He was but even Seth, when he was... Steph never revealed everything. He lied too. I've got a problem. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going I'm to say this. <clears throat> and I have reached this point. Absolutely. Absolutely. What you're saying is true. Yes. The panel, Brittany wasn't shutting it down like she did before. She was really uncomfortable, but yes. I I have been slowly reaching and I believe Sarah has too. I take issue with both sides. Like there's things that Seth has said and grandma has said that I'm like, hold on a minute. Wait. Whoa. Like there are things that have happened and yeah, I'm, I'm definitely uh, at a point where I've, I'm kind of pulling back from that side too. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, wait a minute. For me, it's more yep. the grandma. I just think she says things. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I think she mm-hmm. kind of like, she's in the groups <laughs> and on Facebook and I've seen her post stuff. And I think she kind of is like, I don't know. It's just stuff she's saying. I actually think she, that's why she got mad at CJ because I think she lied. I'm just going to be honest. I don't know. So I'm just saying, it's just my opinion. Okay. I Liz, good. Thank you for reminding me. Yes, I forgot about that poll too. It was late. This is really late for me and I fell asleep listening to this. So I was half awake during some of it. But yes, there was a poll about the incontinence briefs. I think she lied to CJ and said, hey, um, what was it? Seth uh, seen uh, Chris pulling flyers and taking them. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's why she got mad because it's not because she said it. It's because she knows she was lying. That is just my opinion. That's it. But do you think she's lying because she's a true battered woman? Because I do. I mean, I think she really is. Robin? Katie? Yeah. Oh, Nana does. Nana. Y'all, hell is officially froze over. Laura is the voice of reason on this panel right now. What the fuck is going on in this world? No, again, got to give credit where credit is due. That is another thing. What if, let's just play hypotheticals for a second. What if that was the case? What if she is in a bad situation. We don't know. This is why we have to sit back and wait for law enforcement to ride things out and do things. There are so many factors to this that we don't know that actually could impact whatever the outcome of this is, if there is justice that is needed, or if somebody did take him or anything of that nature. There are so many different factors here that could affect the outcome of this case. And let me just put this out there once again. All of this wild speculation is hurting Sebastian. Everybody keeps trying to take hits at Seth and Chris and Katie. They're hitting Sebastian. It's Sebastian's life who is being put on display for fodder on the internet, for content, for what do you think you're doing? You're talking about a vulnerable child with special needs and putting out their deepest, darkest traumas. For what? It's not helping find Sebastian. It's not helping bring Sebastian home at all. There are so many things we don't know. That is why it is so important for us to sit back and let let things play out the way they play out. Stop jumping to conclusions. I think she's a battered lady. I do. I think she's a true battered lady. I'm not talking about you, but I... 
I believe she is too, but I don't believe that's why she's lying. No, why do you think she's I, lying? I have a problem. Because I think that she's, she's, if she tells the truth, she's in trouble. I don't think it's just one party here that's in trouble over here. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not saying this is not possible, but I find it a little suspicious, I guess, to say that she's a battered woman whenever she's a trained military person and um, was right? doing dabbling. The fucking ignorance of you, Regina. The fucking ignorance. So because she was a military woman, she can't be abused? Are you fucking joking right now? Joking. The ignorance of this one. One with uh, MMA fighting. I mean, yeah. it's hard to abuse someone that can that. kick your butt. It's hard to yep. abuse someone that can just destroy abuse you. Abuse isn't always physical. Battered could be you're broken down emotionally. There comes Laura with the fucking rational thinking again. Very true. Abuse isn't always physical. That's what Doesn't I think. Necessarily yeah. mean physical. I agree with that one. Emotionally, I think she is. If you watch her, she looks like she's dead, like inside. Exactly. Like there's no emotion. I do. I do feel like she was in a at least mentally abusive relationship, but she is, you know, got that going on. But that's still, I think, the side. I don't think that's the reason for her lying. And that's just my opinion. I don't think she's yeah. lying. I, I'm just going to tell you guys. I just personally feel like. She really thinks what she's saying has happened. I mean, I think Chris did it without her knowing. She went to bed. He went over there. And that's only. So you notice, even though Laura is trying to slow down, in my opinion, that's what she was doing. Trying to, like, give another side of this. Like, let's step back for a moment. Because you guys are so in this tunnel that you can't even see your way out of it. And that didn't even register to them. They're just pushing off more and misinformation here. But unfortunately laura kind of gives into it some too here only person that um sebastian would trust because that's his stepdad right well then why and, is she lying like why why is she well, saying who that said she, she's lying she, she was asleep i, I was, was trying to tell you how she lied the first lie the first lie was i i woke him up and he wasn't there and then i thought he might have gotten up to make breakfast so i went to check the kitchen when she actually has to either walk through or right past the kitchen yeah but sometimes when you're kind of like you just woke up you just walk past the you know what i mean like Maybe she didn't pay attention. Like, I can kind of see that. I've done that. All right, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't the, what we know so far, and again, I haven't followed her in a couple of days, but what I remember, or last I knew, the police already knew that he was uh, three hours away or whatever because they were on the phone and there's proof of that. So Chris wasn't in town. That's Did something change? Well, he could have been home by the time that, you know, she called him. I'm just saying. But I thought the cops already said that there's proof that he was there the whole Okay. Uh, it's official. It's froze over. She is being factual here. Last thing law enforcement has said is that the data shows he wasn't there. Again, law enforcement has stated they do not suspect foul play that the parents have cooperated. There is no charges on them at whatsoever on any of them, Seth, Chris, or Katie time and yes there's a lot of misinformation that was just said like the mma fighter the fact that military women can't be abused like that is the, just the fucking lack of brain cells in these people i didn't see that i seen somewhere but they said it wasn't like it was like somewhere further not like that far from where his campsite was okay. but there was something about him being kind of further from that and people are saying oh he's with his girlfriend i mean i've seen something like that but i don't know i don't know nobody knows okay i'm just saying like i said i haven't followed in a couple of days but last i knew that chris wasn't cleared by the cops obviously but he they already established that he was nowhere near the house and let me correct that she didn't say that specifically that women can't be that was the implication let me be factual on that because she didn't state verbatim that they can't be but that was her implication any point in the night but i have not heard law enforcement say that i have only heard chris proudfoot say that and i have to take into account that chris proudfoot mm -hmm. posted all over facebook that he had already taken a lot of pictures as the past then went on nancy grace and said that he would take take a lot of tech tests because he hasn't had a lot of tech tests. But then he went and messaged uh, uh, Nancy Grace after all that and said, no, TBI says I shouldn't take a lot of tech tests. Let me explain something about law enforcement. They will never tell someone right. not to take a policy. Yeah, I agree. Only yeah. an, a lawyer does that. That that's is the defense of a defense well, see, attorney. That's right. And, 
And one more thing we have to take into account. Chris Proudfoot was like, well, if I have an attorney, I'd sure like to, I'd like to somebody producing. Well, I've produced his attorney. It's the same attorney that was his attorney in the custody battle for faith. He has had an attorney the entire time, and he is the one that has lied about these things. And it's his own his fault. His attorney's that he's not that great this. to let him go on and on and on and on. No, I mean, Regina, you, know, you bring up a funny. really, you bring up a really good point though, because now that I think about it, I don't think the cop. I don't remember hearing it from the actual cops. I just remember hearing it, and you might be right. It came from Chris himself. I'll have to go back and look because I don't remember now, but you might be right. Um, good point. And, and and I can't help but in these situations, you guys, look at what happened to Audrey Cunningham's mom. She got blamed. Y'all remember that? She got yeah. blamed. I'm over but, here wondering. I'm like, why the freak is nobody responding to me? Like I've said, hello. <laughs> and I was muted the whole damn time. <laughs> I was, I was like, I'm like, why won't they listen to me? Um, I thought I was like, Rick, Rick gave up and then walked away. <laughs> no, I'm over here like people in chatter, like with the panels off the rails. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was gonna say uh, to, to, what, to what Laura said though about she has to go back and look. It's hard to keep up with everything because there's 50 11 interviews. I know. Like 50 11 different people, and law enforcement. What they gave us one press conference that was mm -hmm. really nothing at all. Now, the one that I think probably the most, to me, profound thing that I've heard in the last couple of days is that this is the investigation shifting to, shifting to a criminal investigation now. Which Wait, is there proof of that, though? Because uh, I saw that, too. But is there? Gosh, damn it. Laura, you threw a wrench into me. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm totally joking. Laura is actually being truthful once again on this. Like, this was from a month ago. This whole new line of criminal investigation this was from a month ago uh, when when was this I, let me see it's in the group and here's like the thing. i live and sleep this case i'm just right. saying yeah me too and hold on a minute let me pull this up like, the first place like i heard life is this right now <laughs> the first place i heard was uh through chris mcdonough and the lab and then oh, so God. i come this is the most this is the most i can get is a news channel five search for sebastian rogers is shifting into an investigation authorities say so I've got to try to find, but I can't find the article attached to this. But that says one month ago. And Laura is actively making them go fact check themselves in real time. Real time. This is so uncomfortable for that panel. Let me tell you, it's clear. Yeah, I don't know. There's a, let me, let me pull up the lab. But that because doesn't even say a criminal investigation. That just says an investigation because research and recover can only go so far. So now they're going to look into it as an investigation. And whoever said that brought out an excellent point. This was a month ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but there's I mean, another. There's, there's another. another uh, usually, there's I didn't download this one either. I don't really care. You heard what it just derails from there. <laughs> she did it again. Oh, thin skin, Brittany. There's two more hours of com <laughs> Yes. She did that the other day and I pulled it up because I had to download it. I didn't download this one because it wasn't that serious. Like I pointed out the point parts that were mostly problematic, but I was even giving her credit for when she was eating her own words and correcting the misinformation. <laughs> she cannot. Oh my God, Brittany, Brittany. Oh, <laughs> you realize all you're doing. Do you realize all you're doing is giving me way more? <laughs> Oh, what an absolute mess. What a cry baby. It's gross enough. It's gross enough. We got to hear Regina pat herself on the back for a child being essay. Don't worry. That was the part I really wanted to point out. That was it. I, I, we heard what we needed to hear, that you guys were all proud of yourselves for saying that a child had been essayed and it potentially being true. That's a you thing, not an us thing. I'm sure other people have copies of that. I, I advise my client to do that. <laughs> do we cheat them? How law firm? First of all, 
none of these assholes have the money to pay an attorney to come on YouTube and talk for them. Let's be, let's be factual here. They would have to start a GoFundMe. <laughs> oh, this is great. Okay. This is, this is too good to be. <laughs> Dexter even says, stop being thin skinned. He needs treats. <laughs> she did. <laughs> she did. <laughs> Laura was being the voice of reason. I got to give it to Laura. Laura was. I don't agree with Laura hardly ever, but she she was calling them and making them actually fact check in real time. But th then the one goes on to say over and over again in that that from a legal perspective, from a legal perspective. So let's talk about from a legal perspective, from a legal perspective. You guys acknowledge that our justice system is fucked. You know why our justice system is fucked? Because of ignorant fools like you who don't understand what policy and procedures are put into place. Let's talk about the difference between exploiters and people who film trials. There is a need for people to film trials, to actually stream trials, because it's teaching people the ways our justice system, system works. It's to show the disparities in our justice system that still exist to this day, to show that when cases go upside down, that people are let go way too early. The sentencing is incorrect. We need prison reform. We need all sorts of reform. It is such an important part to have tra transparency in the court process. I applaud anybody that is doing the filming of these trials the right way. Now, there are some that still do it with wild speculation and crazy things as it's going. But at least in those cases, they are in the court. There is somebody on trial. In this, we don't have a crime, let alone somebody on trial. You are impeding active investigations and continuing to put out misinformation that actually impact justice for victims. Meanwhile, crying that you're a fucking victim while you take attention away and exploit victims on the daily. Do you get that? No, you don't, because your head's up your ass. Absolutely head up your ass. Sorry, I had to step away and wipe my nose for a minute. Seriously, beyond belief, how they cannot understand this. Our special needs kids are vulnerable. They deserve rights. Children deserve rights. They deserve confidentiality. I don't give a fuck if you brought them into this world. I don't give a shit if you think that they're your property. They're not. They're human beings. Not for people like you to exploit. And you are actively impacting an active investigation. Not just you. Hundreds of you. Hundreds of you. And this is why our transparency with the court system is so needed. Is that actually... Hold on. Is that is that the actual little punk? <laughs> I know I am. I know. I know. Right. I know. I was like, what the fuck? Hold on. Is that actually him? Oh, you guys, you guys are distracting me today with all your nonsense. Why would you be in here if your attorney's in here? <laughs> Sanford and Son. <laughs> Let's see. I have to get on my phone. Dexter, go away. Dexter, go away. Dexter says, Mom, it's treat time. Screw these idiots. Where'd that go? Oh, there it is. Nope, that's a fake. That's It's not him. Yeah, it's not him. <laughs> Thank you, mods. Anyways. Yeah, it's not him. I just checked. It's a alt. Um... These people are, that's, that's Brittany's video. That's unavailable. Brittany just went and totally hit her video. Of course, she's a crowd, by the way. You want to go see what else is over there? Let's, let's go look. Let's go look. I'm sure we can find a bunch of other ones. Hold on. Let's go see what she's got. Oh, shit. She took a bunch of them down. Oh, oh, Dexter. She cried. She... Hold on, we'll go down. Flat. I just wanted to come in and hang out a little bit. I...
Hold on. Oh, give me a second, y'all. What in the hell, guys? What'd she say? Says that we can't until I catch him in a lie. Yeah, I don't. I don't see where he's been dishonest. Um, Panel with you, and she thanked me. Or let me tell you something. <laughs> this this chick, this chick has done far more than just stay up on panel with me. Let me tell you, she's gone into the lion's den over me. So she is definitely a true friend. Let me unhide her. Let me see. Okay, so she must have just been found at it until I see Seth say anything that's uh. Until I see anything that he says that we can't, until I catch him in a lie, yeah, I don't, I don't see where he's been dishonest, um, or given us a reason to believe he's dishonest, right? So, I mean, I, I well, he just keeps giving you content to run with, complete content to run with. That's all he's doing. I believe what he says. Now, there are things like if he tells us something that, like he says that TBI told him that Katie passed a polygraph. That I'm not going to hold on to 100. percent but he's honest, you just said. Because I don't know that TPI would tell him if Katie failed. Because right, I don't think they, they will. Yeah, yeah. So they, um, they're not going to tell anything like that. Just oh god, I can't, I can't with these rocket scientists. Nope, I can't. Anyways, I think we got enough of that one. But these are these are super big issues. They went into this dissertation during that one about how like they didn't come to. They didn't even give anybody YouTube. Who do you think was the first one? Oh, yeah, I forgot. We can do this. We can do all the fun little tricks on here. Um, they absolutely were, like, trying to paint a narrative again about how, like, they didn't come and give interviews right away. They didn't do this. They didn't do that. Who do you think were the ones out in, like, front of this getting information out? Chris and Katie. They were act actively working with law enforcement to find their son. They didn't take off to an RV park until just recently. He's been missing for six weeks. Like, there's so much to this. And they have, there's a crime, obviously, and Chris and Katie committed it. Brittany, keep up the stupid shit. It's entertainment for the rest of us. Do you guys want to roll into Pascal in the same one and me just add him to the thumbnail later? Do you want me to do Pascal right now? Because we can. We totally can. And we can just keep it in one long one. Or do you want me to break it into two? Your guys' choice. <clears throat> we can roll into Pascal right now. And I'll just add him to the thumbnail afterwards. Okay, let me find my spots of where I want to go with Pascal. There's a lot to go through with Pascal, truthfully. It's so disheartening. I, I'm so shocked by him. So shocked by him. All right. Okay, we'll we'll go into him. Let me let me switch gears here. There's two live streams that we're gonna look at. Again, this is all under fair use. This is based on my opinion, my opinion only. If I'm being honest, this one probably bothers me the most. Pascal probably bothers me absolutely the most. And it, the reason for it is because there's just no need for this. And I really thought he was victim focused and wouldn't lower himself to this. I, I'm i shocked. Um, and the one I'm going to go to is got a horrible title. Oh boy. You can't avoid it. It unfortunately is out here chapped thank you so much oh let me do that right quick before we segue slim jim thank you t adams thank you julie a thank you for becoming a member Alyssa, thank you rainbow mom thank you stargazer mom thank you for being here all along layla thank you b tim thank you chap test thank you so much annabelle thank you so much thank you all for being here every single one of you thank you for being here let's roll into this <coughs> Yeah, I know, Denise. I know, but I really. How do I put this? Pascal usually fights for some things that I agree with. Um, 
However, on this one, I just, there's nothing that I can get down with. There is absolutely nothing that he says or does that I can, I can rationalize. There's no need for this. Absolutely no need for what he's doing, but it's all about the clicks and views. And I didn't, maybe I just didn't watch him enough to realize that's what it was. I know a while ago when he lost his monetization that everybody rallied to make sure he got his monetization back, but he is so fucking dramatic. In fact, let me show you the thumbnail I made for him. I already had a thumbnail and everything made for him for his own little segment um, because he is so fucking overly dramatic. The dramatics of Pascal. That's what it's been called. But we're just going to wrap it into this. Okay. Trigger warning again. We're going to start back a little bit. This is when he's reviewing stuff. So... Buckle up. I'm sorry. I, I hate discussing this, but it needs to be done. Going through what he's gone through so far. But my my heart hurts. My heart hurts for him. Real talk. Um, First of all, real talk. If you had a heart, you wouldn't even be putting this out there and you wouldn't be using this as title. If your heart actually hurt for the victim in this, you wouldn't be using this for content. You would know where that line was and you jumped right over it. And he's going to make a huge jump right here. It is wild that we're finally hearing all this information. It is very, very wild. I wish. Oh, Duchess, I will absolutely send put you, put it in the chat for you. Sorry, guys. Let me. There you go. Okay. None of this was true. I wish this never happened. I wish this information was never real. But nonetheless, it is still extremely shocking. And it's a... And thank you, Duchess. I hope you're feeling better. Very big pill to swallow. Very big pill. It hurts my heart, but it angers the hell out of me as well. Because it seems like even before he disappeared... Help was not given to him at eight years old. That's incorrect because we have heard from Seth even admit that Katie, Katie was the one to report. So they treat, I need to bring this up and it's, I've been sitting with this for some time and not wanting to even talk about it. But while the internet is slamming Katie, Seth admitted to the fact that Katie contacted as soon as she found out, obviously somebody told her, confided in her. I don't know if that was Sebastian. She caught something. I don't know. She contacted and reported it to CPS. She self-reported. He was see, he was getting help. Seth wasn't approving of the help that he was getting because he admitted that he went in and yelled at the therapist because it sounds like they were doing art therapy or play therapy to work through and to that point. Katie self-reported that incident, according to Seth. But yet she is this horrible, negligent mother. Meanwhile, she seems to have done what was needed to do to report this incident. Now, like I said, I'm not trying to knock Seth. I'm not even knocking the Proudfoots, okay? But my heart hurts because this kid went through something very traumatic, and just recently, you, Pika. 15 or 14 years old, he was finally getting the help that he needed to cope and find healing from that traumatic experience. That's very big. That's very, very big. And, it, you know, I get it at eight years old, maybe. But I want to know how much he paid for these interviews. I really do. At the same time, like I said, I wish something was done during that time. I wish... Charges were pressed on this 13-year-old boy. I'm still curious as to who this 13-year-old boy is. He's 20 now. So who is that person? What do you think that does? What do you think right there, what he just said? What do you think that that did? <clears throat> that was a dog whistle for his subs and everybody else to go and try to find out who was potentially the offender in this, who was a minor at the time. 
He points out that he is now an adult. Unnecessary. Absolutely unnecessary. Doesn't have anything to do with Sebastian missing and isn't going to help bring him home. Where is that person? And is this person still out here doing this to other people? You got to remember that now 20 year old man learned that from somebody else. Let's not forget that. So all of these assumptions that if you essay somebody else, that you've obviously done it to somebody, somebody did it to you. You learn that from somewhere. That's not always the case. Not always, especially that could have been his first offense. We don't know that as fact. We just don't. And then passed it on to little Sebastian at eight years old. Who was that? Who is or was that 13 year old boy? And where? We don't need to know. Is he now? We don't need That's to know. We don't need to know any of that. And you just incited your entire chat to try and go find this kid. That's what I'd like to know as well. But it's mind blowing to me that all this that has transpired, all this that has gone down. Oh, stop with the fucking dramatics. If you cared, you wouldn't have put this out there. Can you imagine if this was your child? Your child. Think about that. Oh, wait. It's just disconnect. It's YouTube content, right? And he still never got the help that he deserved. That he needed. Like I said, it hurts my heart. It really does hurt my heart. It does. Because even so, let's just remember, there was a CPS incident that's wrapped up in that situation that happened in the apartment of the Proudfoots with this 13-year-old boy and eight-year-old Sebastian that happened in California. So the CPS stuff is not a new thing. There have been multiple CPS situations in the past that have some sort of connection with the Proudfoots. Which one of them we know was self-reported. One of them we know, oh yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Yes, they absolutely did, Tracy. One of them we know was self-reported by Katie. Again, he wasn't removed from the house. Again, there was not an active open case. They opened one when he went missing. That is common standard procedure. Okay, moving on. It's all these long blank stares into the camera. Fucking out of here. That is really something to, to kind of <sighs> consume in our heads and think about and let that marinate because that's a lot. Like I said, it's a very, very big pill to swallow, y'all. Very, very big pill to swallow. I gotta. Not only did mom say he got help. Seth admitted to the fact that Katie reported it to CPS, got the investigation started protecting her son, had him in treatment that Seth wasn't happy with. He had been getting help, but they completely look over that and make this into some sort of show. Gang of, of um, Super Chats, memberships, and all that stuff I got to get into here really quick, and then we're going to continue on. So just stay with me because you guys have some really great questions and Super Chats in here, and I really do appreciate it, guys. It really does mean a lot. Well, Anita, thank you so much for gifting one membership. Miss Another with the slimy, slimy soundboard that comes in, you know, all about a child, but he's inciting people to go after a child, potentially a youth offender. We don't, we don't know the situation. We don't need to know. Steve, thank you so much for becoming a member. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family crafting with Amy. Or sorry, sorry. Uh, thank you for gifting five memberships uh, crafting with Amy. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Thank you so much. Lisa, welcome to the family. I really do appreciate it. Okay. I think those are all the memberships. So thank you so, so very much. And just like all of them, and even the ones that have been gifted, welcome to the family. Please consider becoming a member of the family. That really does mean a lot. It helps the show, helps us grow, et cetera. 
Trev Time. What's up, man? What's up, Trev? Thank you so much. Please hit the like button for our boy, Pascal. Yes, hit that like button down below. I'd love, I'd love that. That would really mean a lot. Think about what the title of this video is. Sebastian, Sebastian S.A. Victim. Heartbreaking details in Sebastian Rogers' case. Chris declined polygraph. And he's turning it into some sort of fucking... I, I don't even know. What you, this is so gross. It's not even funny. I'd love to see if we can get it to 2,000. Let's get to 2K. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button down below. A like doesn't cost a thing. We are not done. The party is just, or not the party, but the conversation is just getting started, okay? Uh, Carbonized, thank you so much. Uh, they gave up on him before he was even lost, in my honest opinion. Yeah, that's the vibe I'm... I've heard that, Cold Case Crystal. Thank you for putting that in there, and thank you for the super chat. I have heard that. Again, not information we should even know, really, truthfully. Getting as far as the proud foots. I, I feel like what Justin said earlier as well, I, I agree with. It's bad parenting. It's bad care on on, on their part, on the Proudfoot's part. The opportunity. He is calling them a bad parent because a child was essayed. That's quite a jump. Quite an absolute fucking jump. Because I know that there's many parents in here that unfortunately their child or somebody they love that was in their care or custody Things happen. Doesn't mean you're a terrible parent at all. Shit happens. It really unfortunately does. You can do everything right. You can be a helicopter mom and shit goes on. Obviously, again, Katie reported it. Thank you, Mike. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate you. Yeah, gas for the motorcycle. True. Um, We don't know, and that, that leap right there is dangerous. He's to make sure that he is well, to take care of him properly. Those, it's like they drop, they drop the ball on that for sure, for sure. And that's the reason why, even more. Everyone's looking at the Proudfoots even harder. Let's be real. That polygraph thing, he done mucked that up. He done mucked that up, y'all. That was, that's bad. Again, no, it's not. Denying Nancy Grace a polygraph, no, it's not. Brianna says CPS records are sealed for the privacy of the children. Family court records are sealed for the privacy of the children. Seth should have kept this to himself for the privacy of his child. And I don't even recognize Pascal anymore. Truthful. Very truthful on that. And thank you for that. Number one, it's our job to research. Number two, to get both sides. Number four, to not help exploit. Sorry, Pascal. This wasn't it. Absolutely agree, Tracy. My mom was a terrible parent and it still wasn't her fault. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for saying that audacity. And I'm sorry for anybody in here that has gone through that or your child has or anything. Okay, that's bad. All right. And he's not going to be able to come back from that unless he does the polygraph test. And he, of course, Passes with flying colors, but at the same time, we're going to talk about that in, uh, right after this super chat. Okay. Oh. Creek, thank you so much for the five. Mom describes son in negative lights in her interviews. Yes, she does. Not all of them, but a good portion of them for sure. Mimi, thank you so much for the love. I really do appreciate the super sticker. Mimi, again, thank you. Be kind. Hit the like button. Be kind to our mod. Yes. Shout out to S Dubs. Thank you so much, S Dubs, for holding it down. Okay. Don't worry. I'll be adding more mods in the future. But last time I tried to add mods in the past, it, it started a lot of drama. Uh, so I will be making some choices as far as mods in the very near future. Not right now. So nobody try to like step up and go, I'll be tribute. Don't do it. Don't do it. I won't listen to it. I'll ignore it. Okay. Primrose, thank you so much. So Sebastian's offender will be 20 or so now. Exactly. Where is he? Could he be responsible for his disappearance? That's what I'd like to know too. I'd like to know if that, uh, if that was looked into. I'd like to know that too, Primrose. You said the exact same doggone thing that I've been thinking this entire doggone time. Okay. So here we go again. Here we go again. More dog whistles to find the child. Because that's information. That's big information. <clears throat> big information that law enforcement needs. And stop this whole manipulative stare into the camera. I see what you're doing here. It's all gross. You're exploiting a child being essayed. Think about that for a moment. Think about if this is your child in the future. Would you want this done? Hmm. And again, that's seven years that Sebastian has been in that house, not feeling very comfortable. Just recently, was he starting to get therapy for that? 
for the incident or for the tragedy that happened? Yes, B Tim. He he alluded to that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. To him at eight years old just now. Do you realize that's big, y'all? That's big. So it does make me wonder. And it's also misinformation, once again, that you're putting out there. We know, and you heard it from Seth to you directly, that Katie did get him help. Seth shut it down and had a fit because it wasn't what he deemed necessary. Wonder, did he really kick rocks? But then in my mind, I'm like, somebody who is not fond of dirty feet or getting dirty or anything of that sort, would he really just kick rocks without shoes? That's weird. Like it's not weird. It's not weird at all. Stop making it into something it's not. I said, I don't think he left on his own. I don't think he vanished into thin air on his own. I'm going to keep saying that until I'm wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Until You don't give a fuck if you're wrong or not. It's all about the views and the money for you. And you can see it on this page. He, was bare he wasn't making these numbers until he started the Riley case and then this one. I'm proven wrong. And does it have anything to do with that stuff? Maybe not. But it does give us a little bit more insight on the psyche and the character and the vibe within the, ha the household, within that family. It does. It gives us a little bit. Tish, what's up, Tish? Thank you so much. So I live a couple of subdivisions over uh, with as many cameras around and all the volunteers. It's mind boggling. Nothing has been found. Uh, Tish, I am just, I'm right there with you, girl. Okay, I'm right there with you, girl. I'm confused and shocked. And I just want to know the truth. And I think we all want to know the truth, too. M dog o dizzle. I know I just butchered that, but you know, M dog o dizzle. Anyway, thank you so much. Uh, he's not. I guess he does not get SSI, which, without work history, in all, he's alleged for, uh, eligible for maybe income based. They both made too much money. Interesting. So if they made too much money, that check don't matter. He doesn't get a check. Do simple research with SSI and children. You have to have under $2,000 in assets and it goes off of the family's income. Obviously you guys have made such a big deal out of where they live and the jobs and the cars that they drive. He wouldn't even qualify. But it could matter for Seth Rogers. And I'm not sitting here saying, <clears throat> no, I think Seth, I believe Seth Rogers is innocent, but would somebody be this diabolical saying, no, I don't want him to, to get that SS, that social security check, right? That social security deposit, uh, disability check. I want to make Seth's life a living hell. I want to make it difficult for him. So bye-bye. So he gets flat out told that they wouldn't qualify. Instead of taking five seconds and verifying that they wouldn't qualify, he creates an entire new narrative out of it instead of just shuts it down because it's been misinformation that continues to be ran with. And you can do a simple Google search on SSI for children and find out the qualifications and you'll easily find the answers. Sebastian, time to make you disappear. Maybe, maybe. Let's remember this woman allegedly, she made these allegations against Seth during their divorce, said crazy stuff, okay? Of course he was- We don't know if it was crazy or if it was true. Why is Seth the beacon of truth in everything that Chris and Katie say dissected under a microscope? Oh, wait, because Seth is willing to come on so you can have a show? Gotcha. He was found uh, uh, innocent. He was, you know, all the allegations that she made were all lies. The, they did their investigation, okay? And they found out that those things were lies. But she was real di diabolical, okay? She tried to do some serious nasty work we so that he wouldn't have- We don't know if they were lies. We have no idea if they were lies have custody over their child. So what are the, what is the chances of him about to get Sebastian at the end? Why didn't you take him a year ago? Just wondering, why do you say he needed to get some behaviors under control before he could come live with them? End of the school year. The school year is about to end very soon. And she's just sitting there going, no, nah, I need to make his life a living hell. No, I'm not going to make it easy for him. I don't care. I don't care if he likes that. Like, I hate it that Sebastian loves being with his dad, but hates being with us. Mer, jealousy, all that stuff. You see what I'm saying? You see where I'm going there? Maybe she's like, I'm just going to try to make his life a living hell. And maybe she's stewing with joy right now. Maybe she loves this. That that She's got a missing child, Pascal. She's got a missing child. You think she loves this? Because she won't give the internet answers that you feel that you're entitled to. 
Seth is out here, just just panicked and desperate. Maybe she's just sitting there in the dark, just mo-ho-ho, you know what I mean? Like Mr. Smithers or some some ish. Real talk. Wow. Talk. Maybe. Crazy. Moving on. Jamie, thank you so much. Secrets, lies, and money, proud feet, and socks are getting st- uh, stinkier by the day. Yeah. We have no indication that the parents are involved with anything at this point, according to law enforcement, according to the facts. We have also no indication that Chris's parents are responsible for anything or Katie's. None. Or Seth. Or Seth's parents, for that matter. None of them. Yes, they are. That's what I think. The proud feats. All right. S-Dubs, thank you so much. Someone check out Nancy G from 30 minutes ago. Someone said check out Nancy Nancy G from 30 minutes ago. Okay, so Nancy G from 30 minutes ago on Twitter, on the YouTubes, way up, babies. Someone tell me that in the chat, please. That would be greatly appreciated, okay? Izzy, thank you so much. From East Nashville. Julie Grant is amazing. I agree. She's awesome. Okay. Uh, I get hyped listening to her on opening statements. You're cool as hell too. Thanks. You're like, eh, eh you're cool, Pascal. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Izzy. I appreciate the support. And thanks for watching this show. Yeah, it's a great show. It's a great show. I hope to go back on there very soon. Okay. Connie, thank you so much for the five super sticker. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Chrissy, thank you. Pretty rich that pretty rich that CP yes. who didn't want to stay in Nina's family mobile home per her interview <laughs> is living in an RV now. Interesting. And that's interesting, right? Love your coverage, Pascal. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about this really quick. Okay. Cosmic, do not ever apologize to me for your language when I sit up here and cuss like a truck driver and I'm completely unapologetic for it. I think a lot of us are feeling rage about all of this. There is so much to be enraged about with all of this. It's pure disgusting. I'm glad that you brought this up. Let me just throw this super chat back up. First off, thank you so much for the support. Second. Okay. Where are the proud feats? Right now, as we speak, now here's the thing: there have been re- now he's going to disrespect them too and call them the Proud Feets, even though their last name is Proudfoot. Cool, I see you. Rumors: you guys have been sending me emails and DMs like a mug over this situation. All y'all have been sending me stuff, basically saying, "Oh my word, the Proud Feets are moving. The Proud Feets are selling their home." Uh, let's be real. I am. That's not truthful whatsoever actual realtors with realty licenses have checked it out it's not on the market i'm very shocked about that information because if that's true why would they be selling their private domicile and living in an rv down by the river i'm still curious about that the way they have been out here moving in these streets have been sus as hell and they're not doing anything to make it better for themselves. That's the doggone problem. Because they won't give social media YouTubers answers that they feel entitled to. That is the doggone problem. No, the doggone problem is people like you and many others running with misinformation and speculation that's not helping bring Sebastian home whatsoever. Taking the focus off of Sebastian. You haven't heard anything about Sebastian right now, have you? Not at all. Most of these videos you don't. You hear speculation over the parents, not about Sebastian. You hear all of the things that should have never been released about Sebastian's private life being speculated over, twisted and turned to fit narratives, not about Sebastian, not about things that could help bring him home. Just saying, big problem. But I'm hearing that they're trying to sell their home. I don't know if that's entirely true. I have not heard any confirmation of that whatsoever. I'm just hearing rumor mill, people talking about that in emails and and DMs and and the sort. Actually, hold on. Let me pull up one of these emails. Don't worry. I'm not going to show it to you guys, okay, because I'm trying to be kind, all right? No, this is actually, let me show you the date on this one. This one is from six days ago, five days ago. Let me go down here. Uh, Six days ago. This is from six days ago. We are not going to get through much more of this one, and then I'm going to switch to one more. But... Let's see. I'm a Hendersonville native. I live in the area. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I'm looking for it. Where is it? In fact, we're going to cut that one off right here because I have another one that I want to show you guys that's more recent than this one. Every one of them's just been worse than the next. All right. 
Um, buckle up. This one is from that was made. This one's from just the other night. And Seth comes on this one. All right. This is, we're going to end with this one, but uh, I don't know how much of this I can take. Gas, et cetera. Okay. Maybe a little something to eat while he's out here running around trying to find Sebastian. So now. So, oh, hold on. Let me. Everybody show some love. Put some green hearts emojis in the chat, you know, right quick for uh, Seth, for Sebastian and all that. And also I want to say this too. We do have his cash app. We do have his uh, um, the GoFundMe as well. Those links are down below in the description box right now as we speak. But I also have it right now in the chat. Okay. So please. Whoa. Appreciate the love, guys. Yeah, you see that? I know. I've been trying to slow it down as it keeps getting faster and faster. It's so Seth is on the phone with Pascal at the time. That's Seth's voice that you're hearing in the background. And he will kind of bring it up here in a, a second so you can kind of see that. But the cash app. And the GoFundMe continue to be dropped. Meanwhile, all of these people are giving Chris and Katie absolute hell because Chris is attempting to go back to work. Is we don't know what's going on there. Um, meanwhile, when you have a missing child, your bills don't stop. So Seth can be supported financially because he has a missing child, but Katie and Chris, fuck them. Right? That's the internet state. Fuck them. They don't deserve anything. They're doing everything backhanded. You know, it's just ridiculous. It's been really nothing for us, man. Um, but I'm pinning it to the top of the chat. Again, this is his cash app. He uses it, guys. Okay? So if you want to support him. No, some people got upset a couple a couple days ago. So if you want to support him, they, and they had they were confused, and they wanted to, they were wondering if it was actually your your cash app. So the cash app is, is pinned. Yes, it, it is. is. Well, it's not and you know why they use cash apps like that? We learned that really quick in the Marvon story is because they can't be traced. There is no transparency whatsoever on Cash App. We have no clue where that goes. That's why people use that. They use the theory that it's faster and it's GoFundMe takes X amount of money. It's like a 3%, 2% surcharge that isn't even really noticeable to people in desperate need. You can withdraw right away. It's automatic as long as you link it, right? There's no need. People try to use GoFundMe or fundraising sites for the transparency reason. But YouTubers have a tendency from what I've seen and learned to like to use Cash App because there is no transparency whatsoever. There's none whatsoever. But it is the but one that you use. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. So just to make that abundantly clear, guys, before we go into this conversation, okay, please do me a favor. All right. It is. If CJ said GoFundMe takes 40%, he's a fucking blatant liar, which doesn't shock me because we've heard him. Oh, he's been whining. Do you remember the other night when we were talking about him too? And he was talking about how he was going to go where he was valued and needed. Well, he's uh, sitting at home explaining this case, crying tears now. But 40% is not factual with GoFundMe. Anybody, please, if you question that, Kathy, thank you for mentioning that. Um, but anybody questions that, please go look. You can go look on GoFundMe sites, you guys. This is this is so easy to follow and navigate and look up this stuff for yourself. It's really not hard or complicated. These are things that you can put in a quick Google search and see. 40%? Hell no, it's two point something, I think. Um, it's just ridiculous. And the Tracy is spot on. The parents agreed no GoFundMe. His sister set one up, goal of 20K. Now it's 25K. So if he didn't want it and it was his sister's fault, why is it up? Very good question, Tracy. Very good question. There's so much here. This has got, I hate to say this, but for the little pieces I do know about the long case, there's some shit going on here that's just... Too many people are involving themselves, too many YouTubers, and things are just going south. And it's the kids that suffer, y'all. It's the, the missing, it's the victims that continue to suffer in these cases. To pin to the top, it is pinned to the top of the chat right now as we speak. All right. And it's also in the in the description box down below. And the GoFundMe link is in the description box down below. If you want to support him and show him love, please by all means send him Cash App send him you know your funds or your support to him via his cash app okay guys just a fair warning or turn off flyers and pay them out there it is they're for for flyers 
etc. I'm sure for some gas, etc. Okay, maybe a little something to eat while he's out here running around trying to find Sebastian. So now, so now that we have you on the sh- on the on the show, and this was meanwhile, I, I just need to mention this because if it was Chris and Katie, they would be vilified for it. Seth is obviously injured. He has a job. So he's probably taking leave. Hopefully all of them have some sort of FMLA. That's my hope for all of the parents, that they have some sort of FMLA that can help recoup the costs that they have going on, or at least their away time. We just don't know. But there is no transparency here on any of this. You know, I appreciate you hopping on in in such an impromptu way. Um, You know, uh, I really do appreciate it. But we got to get down to brass tacks, okay? I hate to ask you, but have you heard about this information about this remains being found out out there? Uh, no. Ah, negatory. TBI, Summer County, they don't speak to me. All right. This right here. This. He knew for a fact. It doesn't pay. Sorry, Tracy. Urch. Back my ass up. There's one. Is it? There's a sure I can't remember what it's called. A lot of people don't have it though. But with the there's something. Anyways, thank you for correcting that. Urch misinformation being corrected in the chat. Yes, short-term disability. Thank you. Is there a term for it though? But would short-term disability? Anyways, I hope that they have something through their employers. That's what I'm saying is I'm hopeful that there's something through their employers that their jobs are protected and that they their income is somehow there's something going on. That's what I'm trying to get at. I don't know the terms. They have different jobs. I know. I don't know if he works for state or fed. I'm not sure. So anyways, thank you for that, though. I don't think they like me right now. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Uh, it's probably because I felt that they should call for a higher power. And Okay, so let's get back to this part. Sorry, thank you again for correcting that. He knew, they knew that this body that was found had nothing to do with Sebastian. He waits till he gets him on live stream. And then he asks that question. Can you imagine if he didn't know and that would have been the case? He should have vetted that with him before they went live. No care, no concern, even though everybody knew that it had no, they were really clear, really fast. No, I think we get some pain for it. Right, 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 right. Man, you you know, uh, man, I got, I, you know, we, we, You know, I have, you know, you, you know, I have nothing but love for you. And I, I you know, of course, I, I'm I'm supporting you 110 percent. And, you know, my, my prayers go out to you and your family and all that. Um, and I can only imagine what you're going through as far as, you know, as soon as you get onto a, a show or you go into you go on to, you know, a, a, a court TV or Nancy Grace or, you know, any of these other platforms. Um, you know, the I, bombardment of questions. It, it's the it's the bombardment of questions. <laughs> it, it, and it's Duchess, you want me to address that when I'm done? I'll gladly address it. I will gladly address it if you want me to, because that's some straight up BS. It's interesting because nobody's getting answers, and everybody, you know, humans are inquisitive. We yes. want to ask questions, and we can get answers. Yep, yep. And then as soon as you answer a piece, it opens up another can of worms. And, want another one. <laughs> and then it's like, but what does that mean? And then, but what does that mean too? And and then it keeps going and going and going. So I, I do want to say to you that uh, I just appreciate. I mean, let's be real. It, it it's been like peeling an, an onion, you know, it's been peeling layers of an onion. And as time goes on, there's more information that comes out. Uh, and, and, and unfortunately, you're the only one that's actually putting out the information. If there were three of y'all, you know, if there were two more people with you, I think that there'd be a lot more clarity, a lot faster. Let's be very clear. What Seth is putting out is an information that the Internet needed to know. Take that to law enforcement. But he claims that law enforcement isn't even talking to him. Why would that be? Did that send red flags to anybody else? Why would law enforcement not be having communication with him? Um, but then again, maybe not. But I do appreciate you being just putting the information out there. You know, whether it's messy or whether it's not, I, I, I just appreciate you just saying what people, I, what I feel people need to know. 
Pascal thinks that people need to know about Sebastian's trauma, even though it's none of our business to know that information. And it's definitely not Seth's right to exploit his child's trauma for clicks and views. And actually, Seth is getting some profit out of it. Pascal's getting the clicks and views. And every time he releases just a little bit more, pushes it a little bit farther, gives some other little content, keeps people hanging on. Then he comes back on for a show. They drop his cash app. He releases a little bit more. Meanwhile, Chris and Katie are being raked over the coals every single day. About Sebastian and what has happened in his past. What do you mean by what has happened in this past? No, I mean, the information that you said that, you know, you came onto the show, you clarified a whole bunch of things. There were things that were told about when he was young. You see what I'm saying? That I, I think opens up, a, makes the, makes, you know, the situation a little bit more three-dimensional, right? It gives a little bit more of, a, well, there could be a possibility of this, or there could be a possibility of, this could be a possibility of why he ran off or et cetera. You see what I'm saying? Um, so like I said, I just appreciate you. We don't know what's that. going on. You right. Know, we don't, we, we, we truly do not know what's going on. Um, unfortunately, haven't found any video proof of him uh, since Texas Roadhouse. The video. But we've heard allegedly Sweet Pilo claim that she spoke to a neighbor who said that the law enforcement officers confirmed to her that it was Sebastian that took the garbage out. Seth said in one of the previous interviews that that law enforcement showed him the video of Sebastian taking the garbage out. But now he's saying that there's no proof from the Texas Roadhouse. Why is things changing? I don't know. The video that they showed me of him taking the trash out. Yeah. You can't see. So it's not not a definite picture. So wait, wait. So you when you say when the video of him taking the trash out, you can't really see. Can you explain what you actually saw in that footage then of him taking out the trash? Allegedly? You see you see a flashlight. And, that, it? and that's it. That's it. Hey, what time was that at again? You see a shadow. There, I didn't see a time leak on there because it was a ring cam. Aye, aye, aye. So only uh, and, so. and, and, and ring cams do have timestamps. Usually, I don't know if the one he was shown possibly didn't. If it glitched, there's a lot of potential there. I don't know the details. Again, this is an information, but this goes with the narrative that's trying to be painted. And again, people have said that the lights were garbage trucks, and then people continue to say that that's not. There's no way that's possible. I. And, and that ring cam, I, I know you can't give us specifically the location of that ring cam, but was it nearby? Was it, or was it like that video that we saw that was like, you know. A, a Absolutely, Brie, it is supposed to be. Isn't this all supposed to be against the new terms of service? Or is there a loophole since Seth is the one doing it? This should be against terms of service just on the basis of misinformation and ex exploitation of a child. Like this should be but people have been reporting and nothing happens. Absolutely nothing happens. So I don't really understand it either, Brie. It's driving me nuts, but. A cropped, super cropped footage from a, a very no, big they picture. The, they showed me the whole thing. And uh, it's just, it's too dark. Okay. 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 It's too dark to, for me to say that that's my son. You know? Yeah, no doubt. I would be wondering if that's actually, if that's actually him or not too, right? I'm, I'm, yeah, that's, you know, that's interesting. You know, hope it is, but that's speculation, you know? Right. It's speculation. No doubt. No doubt the, the speculation part. Um, okay. So I asked you about this on the phone when we talked to, when we talked yesterday morning. Um, so I wanted to circle back and say that out loud so that everybody can hear it because there's a lot of people that were tagging me in this online and asking me this in emails and whatnot. So I'm going to ask it to you now. There was a, a post that was made on a comment somewhere. I don't know if it was Facebook or any of these social medias, but it was out here in these social media streets. And this person basically said something that I thought was pretty damn brilliant. They said, hey, has anybody asked them, the Proudfoots, to produce the actual clothing that Sebastian was last seen wear, wearing when he left Texas Roadhouse. If they're able to produce those that clothing, then, you know, then, okay, they're in the clear. But if they aren't able to produce those clo that clothing, well, then there you go, Bob's your uncle, that there may be some foul play there. Have they looked into that at all, Seth? I have no idea. Huh. But i tell you what I can do. I can really sit here and go, I was wondering... If you do 
and locate the close E Are you literally texting someone right now as we speak? I am. I am texting them right now as we speak. Who are you texting? The Proud Feats? No. I am texting TBI and Sumner County Sheriff's Club. Yeah. Again, the disrespect to the Proudfoot family. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. All right, Seth. All right. Okay. Because I put him on the spot, y'all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You've been so busy, I wouldn't be surprised if you just haven't had time really, to think about process everything. The, the amount of people that I'm sure you're getting from the, the text messages, the DMs, the phone calls, the emails, et cetera, I can only imagine how many people are sitting here going, well, well, well I got this theory and I got that theory. But that one, I was like, oh, no, no, no. That would be that would be a wrap. That would absolutely be a wrap. If okay, I, I just got to add this. The logic is so off with that whole thing. It doesn't matter if they can produce the clothing. You guys are saying they're guilty of something and that they're avoiding detection by law enforcement that they're like other there's so many people that are running with narratives that they have done all this stuff so even if they produce the clothing that's not going to stop your guys's speculation and misinformation and law enforcement again would be checking all of those boxes i think i'm going to lose my mind they cannot produce the clothing that he was last seen wearing that him last wear last seen wearing walking out of texas roadhouse if they can't produce that clothing, it's a wrap. In my personal opinion, that is a wrap. The neighbor on the call, Sheila, said that that was Friday that he was skipping down the driveway and looked really happy. She said that she didn't see him on Sunday on her camera. But then again, if he really did get home and he really did take out trash, right, and he really did all those things, and then there was a bump that went on in the night where she heard, heard a thud and all that stuff, then yeah. He could very well be in just the black jean, uh, the the black joggers and the black t shirt, uh, of course, of how he was allegedly described to be wearing when he went missing. But if they cannot produce the, those clothing, th those pieces of clothing, that is a very big problem for the Proudfoots, in my personal opinion. And I think that also, I don't care about your personal opinion. And to those people running around stating that there's no child that wears black sweats or tearaway pants and a t shirt to bed. Really? Are, are we really serious that people don't wear that stuff to bed? I'm going to have to tell my girls that they're only allowed to wear pajamas to bed from now on. That's a lot what a lot of people are thinking as well. <clears throat> so, I mean, only thing I can do is ask. They can either answer or not. That's true. That is true. But I will say this, though, too. As much as the, you know, I, I always try to see a silver lining to a certain extent, to a certain extent. Uh, and given the fact that you're saying, you know, TBI hasn't really been, you know, communi you know, uh, uh, transparent with you, hasn't been in communication with you as well and all that. I'm going to be real. Um, B Tim, somebody is saying that. I'll, I'll go through my screenshots again. I can't remember what chat it was in. Um, it might have been Slimy's Worlds. For some reason that comes to mind, but I could be wrong on who it was. It was one of these, one of these in that group that was saying kids don't wear that type of stuff to bed. I, it, it tells me that they're listening. So that's good. I see that as a good thing. Yeah, it, it, they may feel some type of way about that, but at the same time, at least they're listening. Shoot, didn't they just didn't they do a, a a press conference to let us know? Oh yeah, you know nothing's happening, but we're still going to do this press conference because I think that they're finally listening. What are your What are your thoughts on that? That press conference. I mean, I don't understand the. I mean, I understand why they did it, so they could communicate with the public. Yeah. But save face a little bit. Maybe. I don't know. That's their agenda. I mean, true. I'm not responsible for them. Did I lose you? No, I'm here. I'm just thinking. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just thinking, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Because, you know, I want to understand the dynamics that are going on out there. You know, I know that your boots on the ground, you're doing everything you can. And, and law enforcement isn't really law enforcing, it seems like, at least in my personal opinion, that's what it kind of sounds like. Um, and so how do you know that, Pascal? H how? This is so disappointing. You have a huge platform. You have like 130,000 people. You have. You owe it to people, the victims and their families to be factual and stop this. This isn't a show. This is 
real people's lives. This is a real child that is missing. It's not a fucking reality TV show. It's not Howard goddamn Stern podcast. Oh, I am kind of law enforcement is obviously doing their job. I'm curious as to ever since Friday, let's just say, how's the weekend been? How's the search been? Has it been just a circus or has it been fairly organized and, you know, calm and copacetic? I'm sorry. My meds are starting to kick in. What was that? I just asked, how has the search been since Friday? You came and right fucking there is where we're going to end with Pascal today. I'll, I'll do a whole other segment on him tomorrow because there's just so much, so much with him. Right fucking there. You know the man is vulnerable. He's on medication. He's on the internet releasing private detail. You should have said, you know what? Let me let you go. Go get some rest. Your medication's kicking in. I'm sorry about what you're going through if you had integrity. But instead, you're about the clicks and the views. So you're going to bypass right through that and just continue to exploit him. Because in my opinion, he's still exhausted and vulnerable. I don't think any of the parents had anything to do with it. We don't have proof of any of that right now. But you just keep it rolling. Clicks and the views, right? That's all we're doing. Clicks and views. And Seth knows better. Seth knows better. This is becoming a show for him too. Instead of, I, I don't, I don't even know what's going on here. Like this is, this is so ridiculous. I can't even wrap my brain around it. The lies upon lies upon lies upon lies. The misinformation from all of these people is out of control, and you can see that they've lost all connection to reality. We're gonna go back to Slimy's world for a minute because of what was just done to Duchess. So let me go over here and switch gears right quick. And we're going to correct some bullshit. I always put slimy in instead of smiley. Hey, happy Sunday, y'all. Let me check my timestamp on that again. Pause. Give me just a second. Okay. Oh, wait, that's, fuck, she's done another one. She's done another one already. Okay. Wait, is that, which one's it from? Uh, Duchess, do we know if it's from the first one today or the second one today? If you're still in here. I'm going to play, pull it right from there. Oh, Laura, thank you for getting on panel with Brittany and trying to correct those idiots. I really appreciate it. Honestly, like you tried to shut it down and I, I yeah, I couldn't even believe what I was hearing. Couldn't even believe it. The insanity just continues. First one, thank you, Hope for Snoopy. Okay, let me grab that right quick. I gotta look at, I'm pulling it right from here instead of the clip, just so you guys get full context of what it is. Um, going back to this one, back to this, back in the saddle again. Okay, so anyway. Let me see if I can find it. It's right before this part, I think. Sorry, guys, give me one second here. Speaking, polygraph tests are inadmissible in court. They are not uh, scientifically reliable. Um, they're not reliable enough for, oh, but if they have video, I hope that they turn that in to TDI and Sumner County. I wouldn't just turn it into one. I'd turn it into both. But I tell you what, if he's doing that, that that's a problem. But I tell you what, whoever is taking those down, if you're taking them down on purpose, that's not good. 
Now, if it if it has to do with a company and a company's policy, or they're only keeping them up so long. Let me see if I can do it on here. Oh, it's not going to work that way. Hold on. Sorry. Let me get to, let me save this and then I'll just upload it really quick. I'm just airdropping it to myself really quick. Instead of, yeah, we'll just go with the screen recording. Okay. Hold on. Let me just pull it up here. Let me add it. Instead of taking five years to figure out which is which. We'll just go in and add it really quick. There's so much. You guys, I can't even keep up on this stuff. Seriously, it has gotten so bad. There's so many. Have you guys seen Charlie out there running around from CJ's crew begging for money? Claiming he's going down there. And all this bullshit, it's processing. Just give it a second and we'll be back in business. This is just unbelievable at this point. Okay, here we go. Okay. So anyway, I said, well, good. I fear nothing. Now that come out of my mouth. So I'm just telling you that. So anyway. And then I said, oh, I forgot to mention, I don't want anything they got. And the truth is the truth is the truth. However, I did say yesterday I would take the two dogs if they didn't want them. Um, so they can be real free, laugh out loud, but good. Hold on. I said, but good luck ever suing me. I'm not worried. And I mean that. I'm not fucking scared. I don't think JLR is fucking scared. And I don't think Bullhorn Betty is scared. And pardon me for speaking with them. But I can tell you who should be fucking scared. Who should be scared is the ones who is siphoning money for billboards through their cash apps to give to uh, Chris and Katie Proudfoot under the damn table. That's who should be scared. Would you like to call me and I'll give you their fucking names? Because TBI is monitoring them, and I know that for a fact. That's all the tea you're getting from me. So first and foremost, Slimey, stop talking about Duchess. She's got more integrity in her fucking toe than you do in your whole goddamn body. There is billboards up that Duchess collected funds and paid for. Receipts and all. So the only thing you should be scared of is your fucking mouth because it's going to get you in trouble. Stop talking shit about people who are actually doing things for Sebastian to help Sebastian. Duchess has been transparent. Please go look at her entire page. There's videos. She walks you through it. She shows the billboards. She shows the location. And guess what? I'm going to start linking all that information in my descriptions of my videos. So if you want to help Duchess and the Proudfoots, as they call them, the Proudfoot family is what it should be. With billboards, because it's about Sebastian, please reach out to Duchess. Please donate for these billboards. This is absolutely astounding. The gall you have to call Duchess out because she got an interview before you did. That's what this is about, isn't it, Slimy? Nothing to do with anything, because you know she wouldn't embezzle money, siphon money, or any of that. 
You just want to throw your little shady ass stuff in there. Well, you profit off a child that's missing and spreading misinformation. She's actually doing something to help the child. I encourage you to go look at Duchess's page. Go see how much she has actually helped poor Sebastian. Unfucking believable. Siphon money out. Siphon money out to give to them. And so what if you do? So what if you fucking do help the family? So what? Seth hasn't been proven guilty or innocent, neither have Chris and Katie. And they're helping him. What would it matter? They're dropping Seth's cash app. Chris and Katie aren't guilty of anything right now either. Yep, all because she continues to be focused on Sebastian. This is fucking gross. Duchess is the only one, in my opinion, that handled any of that with integrity. Yeah, Chico, right? Right? Oh, y'all. Lord, help us all. I'm so sorry, Duchess. Like, this is the people that are actually. Right, right. Look at what Duchess just said. And this is, oh, she goes over this too. She like talks about the billboards, where they're at, the money raised, how, like. What? What? Yeah, absolutely. We can drop Duchess's link. Absolutely, we can. 100% we can. Any day of the week. I'm so disgusted. I'm so disgusted with all of you. Not Duchess, not not my chat. I'm, I, I. Y'all, I could do this every day, all day long without taking a break and we'd never run out of horrible content. It is so bad out here. And there is just one after another, after another, after another doing this. One after another, after another. I'm beyond just. I've lost all hope in humanity at this point in time. It's gotten so bad. Thank you all for being here. Thank you again, Mike, Brianna. Bree, again, Cold Case Crystal, Duchess, Chap Tess, B Tim, Layla, Stargazer Mom, Rainbow Mom, thank you for becoming new members. Uh, Y'all, this coming month, I hope he's home by then. I really hope he's home by then, but I already know what the Islanders are doing with this, these funds. We will be. I'm hopeful he's home by then, but even if he's not, we will find something in this similar arena to do. But I am I want to be able to help Duchess with these billboards. So I'm gonna try to make anything I can happen. So to help keep those going. And if you feel like donating to the billboards, please do. It's 100% transparent. Duchess has done what she said and it's everything's there. I'm so sick of this shit. I'm so sick of this. Yeah, like the audacity, the fucking audacity of these people. I, starting to feel real, real greedy out here. And it feels like the more salacious the information gets, the more money it brings in. Now we have Slimy out here asking for people, for parents of kids he potentially went to school with, which we know they won't vet. We have her begging for them to call into these shows to give information on Sebastian when it should be going to law enforcement. Not once, not once 
Absolutely, Dean Minshawala. She is, I'm so grateful I found her through this. Truthfully, I've always loved Arctic, Arctic Fox. Absolutely adore Arctic Fox. That is spot on all the time. It is, it's showing, yeah, it really unsolved crimes. Absolutely, y'all. And let me be very clear to true crime creators who are really offended when we say that there's change that needs to come. If you don't behave like this, you will not be impacted by anything that exploits these victims because you do it victim centered. I have absolutely no problem. And I think people that actually stream trials and stuff are doing a service because the public needs to know what is going on in these court cases. There needs to be transparency because there's such a disparity in our justice system. And so many cases, people are getting out. People that should be habitual offenders are being released to reoffend. And I think it gives transparency to see how the court actually works. I think that is such a necessary thing. You can disagree with me, but that is something that people need to realize how many people are being failed on a daily basis? How many people are victims of the justice system? We talk about how people are re-victimized by our system, justice system, which it's really not. But that's where it comes into the conversations have to be changed about policy and procedure. It has to happen. And it's not about taking your freedom of speech. Your freedom of speech, shouldn't you shouldn't be worried about that if it's not impacting the rights of another. You are not free to harm other people, especially children. You're just not. And I can't wait for the day that some of you are sued into oblivion. I will make sure that I'm on with my confetti. Let's see if I can do it, get it to do it. I might not be able to do with that up here. Oh, yeah. Let's see if I can. I can't do the devil horns on here. Let's see. If you don't know what I'm doing, yes, I'm looking ridiculous, but there's a there's a mission for my madness. Sometimes it works. Oh, there it goes. Sometimes it doesn't. Anyways, I was gonna send balloons and like the fireworks for them because as soon as somebody sues, I will be having a party. I I will be having a party when one of these victims' families shut everybody down because they don't deserve this. None of them do this. Mm -mm. Nobody deserves what this family is going through. Sebastian deserves to be brought home. And right now we don't have any information to know where Sebastian is or who's responsible for anything. We don't know, even know if there's been a crime that's been committed. We have no clue. You know what, Trish? And the other thing is, is YouTube's profiting off of this. Like the reality is, is YouTube's making a huge killing off of this because the more that they push, they're getting 30% of that. They're making big money off these missing children, unfortunately, but true. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Mystery, I did a whole video on all the different, there's... There's all sorts of different ones. I can't remember. Obviously, I can't remember how to get them to go because I can throw, you can throw balloons, lightning, all sorts of stuff with just hand symbols. I can't remember. You can thumbs up usually. Sometimes it works. Yeah. Kim, that's what I'm thinking. Genuinely. <clears throat> it's got a hit where Google, doesn't Google own YouTube? But again, that's a multi-million it'd probably settle and keep it moving, truthfully. Oh, APRN, AB is on my list. AB is on my list. And yeah, I'm not going to do it today, but he's coming up because uh, the whole... Actually, hold on. I have that timestamp. Give me one second. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about while we're here. I'll show you guys really quick. I can't even take this guy seriously with true crime like at all. Um, is it a balance? Is that what he's called? I have a timestamp for it. Let me figure out which video it is. Give me one second. Sorry, guys. I have notes on my phone. So, you know, my screenshots and stuff. Okay. 
it is. Okay. Here we go. This is what was said the other day by AB, A Balance. He's Canadian, is all I know about him. Don't know nothing else. Never heard of him before. Not a single, like, care, of course. But listen to this. I was telling you guys about this the other day. Some sort of attention. And Chris loves attention. We'll give you some. For a little while, anyway. There's so many red flags with Chris. You'd mistake the channel of being anti-Chris. But no, each and every video, you can go back and check the, the information and the videos I've attached to this. And go through them and watch them. Each and every time, they're just a little different in that sense that the topic of it does have to do perhaps with Kiss and Chris and Katie, but they're all singular red flags on their own, separate from one another. Binded together by the fact that the person that they were supposed to be protecting, meaning Sebastian Rogers, is nowhere to be found, and they want us to buy this bullshit story and exit stage left. However, every indicator shows that There's neglect and abuse at very least. And they admit that through their language. But why I'm busy doing that, make sure you Our give this video Rebecca a like. And Josh to count. If you haven't yet, make sure you comment and drop that subscribe button. And Pay close attention to this. He's calling Dolly. Share social media. You've reached Jams TV. Most likely, I'm taking a call from another caller. But why I'm busy doing that, make sure you give this video a like. And if you haven't yet, make sure you What's comment, out that subscribe button, you make a call. and share my face on any social media platform you choose. And please try to call back when someone is not on the line. If you hear me speaking with someone, please wait till that call is over to call in. Thank you. Listen. Hi, Dolly. It's A Balance. You're so pretty up there on your screen. I love you. Bye. I'll try calling back in a little bit. I wanted to encourage your audience that in this situation at this point in time, we really need to get an admission out of Katie. And the best way to do that is to try to encourage. We really, I wanted to encourage your audience. We really need to get an admission out of Katie. Katie to separate herself from, from uh, the toxic Chris P in this and let law enforcement know what happened or we're going to get them to turn on each other the old-fashioned way Bye -bye. or we're going to get them to turn on each other the old-fashioned way Sebastian Rogers interesting thank you guys for do dropping Duchess's channel what Their pressure campaign. What? I, I'm speechless over this. I am absolutely speechless over this. I'm encouraging your audience. Thank God you're fucking in Canada. I... <clears throat> I don't even know where these people are coming out of the woodwork. I, I could show you guys so many. Like, these are names you guys know, I think, from the, sound, from the look of the chat. But I could show you so many people that are building channels off of this. Oh, Tracy, I, mm, I think I would lose my fucking mind. I, I would think I would lose my ever-loving mind, truthfully. I would probably, I'd probably end up in jail. <laughs> probably a good thing I don't. Probably a good thing I'm not in Tennessee and probably a good thing I'm nowhere around. 
I just don't have any tolerance for this shit. Like zero. I don't know how anybody does have tolerance for this. I, I don't know. No, there's some new ones indeed that are building channels. There's a guy named Charlie that's building a channel because he's out there searching and retracing. Like there's people like that. There's there's some new ones coming up too that are building and quickly exploiting this. I, I don't. I don't know. I. I don't know what to say. I'm losing hope, y'all. I'm quickly losing hope. And Sebastian's still missing. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Yeah, Trish, right? Holy Spirit, act today. Right, Kathy? Yeah. Tracy, um, I definitely don't sit on a pedestal, and I am 100% arrogant. <laughs> I, I'm good with that. I will continue exploiting the exploiters. I'm very comfortable in this spot. <laughs> I am absolutely okay with all of the names they call me, especially skank ass Tanya Harding. I love that one, especially. <laughs> when it comes to vulnerable families of missing children and missing children in general, yeah, I, I give no fucks. I give no fucks about their sensitivities. None. None. And I will continue. Okay, y'all. I am out. Spanky has a new brainless co-host. Brittany J is, oh, yeah, turning into Trevor business. This is very obvious from the outside looking at you are so spot on. <laughs> That's my, yeah. <laughs> Skank ass Tanya Harding. <laughs> yeah, that's what I get called. <laughs> I hope you guys all have a wonderful rest of your day. Try to keep your head above water. This is too much. Um, and again, I hope we get some good news on Sebastian sooner or later. Um, he's being lost again. Another one that's being lost. So See y'all later. Have a good night. Thank you all my mods. Thank you everybody for being here once again. I will see you guys soon. We've got plenty of work to do. Maybe I can make Brittany take down some more streams. <laughs> Bye y'all. Bye Tanya Harding. <laughs>